a week ago. The Toledo Rockets now find themselves a game back in the MAC West standings. If they are to bounce back tonight and stay in the hunt for the MAC title game, they will have to do so against their biggest rival, the Bowling Green Falcons and wide receiver Kamar Jordan. Separated by only 27 miles, meeting for the 75th time, it's Bowling Green versus Toledo, and it's next. Seven and a half miles separate Bowling Green from Toledo. And you just travel up I-75 from Bowling Green and you will get here to the Glass Bowl here in Toledo, Ohio. And it's the Rockets playing host to the Falcons in the 75th edition of this rivalry showdown. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. This is my Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. Glad you could be with us. And Andre, for this Toledo football team, they're bowl eligible. The first time they've been able to do that since 2005. Second year for their head coach. You certainly put his stamp on this program early on. However, they are coming off a tough loss to Northern Illinois last Wednesday night. They kind of took, I guess, uh, they had control of their own destiny. They no longer have that after that loss. They're still in the race for a divisional championship, but this is a rivalry game, and that's good news for Toledo fans because you know your team's going to come to play, and they're going to have to play well behind a young redshirt freshman quarterback. Yeah, redshirt freshman quarterback Terrence Owens, and he is a young dual-threat quarterback that can both run the football and kill you with his legs. As well, he can throw it. He's got a big arm. It can stretch the field for Toledo. Got all the coaches and his teammates excited about the possibilities with him under center. 53% completion percentage. He's thrown seven touchdowns and only one interception. He knows how to take care of the football. When Austin Dan went down with an injury, Tim Beckman, the head coach, tells us that he has no concerns about Terrence Owens. We will see how he will play in his first edition of this Bowling Green Toledo rivalry game. Now, as far as the Falcons are concerned, folks, this is an unbelievable storyline. This is a team that's 2-8. and eight. But they have had some unbelievable losses. Five of their games have gone down to the final play. They have lost four of those, including last Wednesday night when Miami of Ohio had a last-second field goal to win 24-21. Who knows what could have been? That has been the story for Dave Clawson here, who took this club to a bowl game in his first season last year. But this is also a team that has some weapons offensively, and you've got to start at wide receiver. Yeah, and this Kamar Jordan is the guy that does it for Bowling Green. He's filling in some pretty big shoes, though. With Freddie Barnes, the departure of Freddie Barnes, that only left 155 receptions <laughs> yeah. out there. But he's got 80 of his own, and that ranks him fourth in all of college football in receptions. He's a guy that can get it done. If you like electricity, you like offense, and a receiver that can make some plays in space, you got to love Kamar Jordan. All right. Well, the Falcons have won three straight in this series. Toledo will try to snap that streak. We'll see if it happens. Stay with us. It's the Falcons and the Rockets. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. An Audi, truth in engineering. We're in the glass bowl. It is a cold night, but you couldn't tell by some of those guys down there. It's a rivalry game. That means you got to bring your A game. Those Rocket faithful fans are doing that. Bowling Green and Toledo. Bowling Green comes in 2-8, and 1-5. In conference play, Toledo six and four, five and one. 
in conference play. If you look at the series history, 39-31 with four ties, Bowling Green out in front. This is the battle for the Peace Pipe. Used to be known on the basketball court, the battle for the Peace Pipe, but 1969, somebody stole the pipe. Well, in 1980, they decided to bring the pipe back, make a new one. So in 1980, we started playing for it here on the gridiron. I, I like uh, the battle for I-75 a little better than the Peace Pipe. We were talking about football rivalries. Come on, I like I-75. Let's defend our turf. Temperature as we kick it off at 42, supposed to dip down to the mid-30s with a little bit of wind. So going to be a chilly night here in Toledo. Bowling Green won the toss. They deferred, so Toledo will receive the football. Both these teams coming off tough losses. Toledo had some high aspirations, but those were shot down last week against Northern Illinois. Brian Wright will kick it off. That'll go about six yards deep to Eric Page, and the Rockets will bring it out to the 20-yard line, and this will give us our first chance to look at that young man wearing number two, the 6'3", 180-pound freshman out of Cleveland, Ohio, Terrence Owens. Making just his second start of his young college career, but he's got a lot of experience. He's been in a lot of ball games throughout the season, and his teammates believe in him, the coaches believe in him. Last week, he showed, uh, he showed him something in the second half against Northern Illinois. It's averaging 25 points a game. That's fifth in the MAC. Going up against a Bowling Green defense, giving up almost 33 points a game. That's 11th in the MAC. Adonis Thomas with the first carry, and he'll pick up just a yard. Time to look at our impact players. Brought to you by Tommy Hilfiger and Adonis Thomas. Certainly one of those guys that will have an impact. Yeah, they want to take some pressure off a young quarterback, and he's a guy averaging over six yards a carry. Eric Page. They will line him up everywhere. He has 73 receptions of his own. And then on the defense, a guy that leads the way, Dwayne Woods in the middle. You see they're tied for the FBS lead, or fifth in uh, tackles with 106 tackles on the season. So second down and nine for Terrence Owens and company. They work out of the shotgun. And the handoff goes to Bernard Reedy, the true freshman. Out of St. Petersburg, Florida will pick up six, and that'll bring up a third down and three situation for the Rockets. And just where offensive coordinator Matt Campbell wants to be. Second down, third down, and short all game long, and put a lot of pressure on this Bowling Green defensive unit that's actually played pretty good the last four games. They've been solid on defense. Look at Tim Beckman, the head coach. David Pasquale in at quarterback. He will keep it now. Pasquale picks up the first down and then some out over the 35. They will mark it at the 37 yard line. That's a nine yard gain. Well, they like to bring him in in the Wildcat package, and you see right here pulling the big fella around. Nate Cole and nice kick out block and just a lot of space there for the quarterback to run through. 6 2, 230. Yep. Goes Pasquale. Thomas. We'll get the snap, and he'll try to get the outside corner, and that'll be close to the first down marker. Cameron Trust pushes him out of bounds. 12-yard pickup. There is Tim Beckman, second year as a Toledo head coach. Well, we had a good talk and discussion with him yesterday, and he is fired up. I mean, he says he was on the job. The second sentence after he was hired was, hey, beat Bowling Green. Yeah, that's what the rivalry means. And he's been on the other side of it, so he knows exactly what's what's expected from these two programs. Yeah, he was the defensive coordinator at Bowling Green from 99 to 2004. Pass complete near side. Kenny Stafford to be close to that first down line. You know, Dave, every quarterback has a way of kind of Getting himself settled down and settled into a game. So I asked the offensive coordinator Matt Campbell about Terrence Owens. He says, we got to get him something short and quick so that he just settles in. You know, a lot of guys, if they're runners, they like fizz, you know, to take on a defender, get that initial hit, and then they settle in. He's just a nice short little completion as he did there. Thomas in the Wildcat formation gets a block. 
but not much more than that. He will pick up the first down, a gain of about three and a half, needed a yard. Champ fells it on the tackle, but a missed tackle from Bowling Green. And that has been an issue for the Falcons, missed tackles. Boy, it just forces you to defend the entire field when you put a guy like that at quarterback or a running quarterback in the Wildcat. Now you're defending 11 as opposed to just 10. You can't really be aggressive because you got to account for his ability to hit the home run on you. First down and 10 for the Rockets. Nice drive as they're inside the Falcon 40. But Thomas goes backwards. Adonis Thomas. Averaging over six yards a carry will lose five. Darius Smith with the big hit. Yeah, Kevin Alvarado got up the field as well, but Darius Smith with a tackle. And from an athletic family, his father played football at Tennessee State. He played in all 13 games a year ago. A big guy, 6'3", 240, coming off the edge. Nice pass rusher as well. So now a second and 15 coming up for Terrence Owens and company. And the Rockets will be back to five. start. Offense number 69. Five yard penalty. Second down. Now the, the penalties that take place before the snap drive coach is crazy. Especially when it's your center. <laughs> He's the guy that false starts. Kevin Kowalski has played a lot of football at Toledo. Now Coach Beckman not happy with the penalty situation. That is the 81st time this year the Rockets have been flagged. That is last in the MAC, averaging 67 yards a game in penalties. Five receiver look, three to the top, two to the near side. Owens out of the shotgun on a now second down and 20. Owens over the middle, passes caught. Six for the Rockets. 48 yards on the pitch and catch. Where they get Eric Page matched with Keith Morgan, the safety, and you see him right here trying to double cover him, but he splits the two, and then he's going to win that foot race each and every time. That is the sixth touchdown reception for Eric Page. For the coaches, when you talk to him about Eric Page, it just really drive home the point that he is an excellent route runner who understands concepts and where to be and where to get himself to on the field in order to get to open. To the play. Let's force the right conduct in the offense, number seven. 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Well, that's receiver Kenny Stafford. I didn't see that, and I don't think that Tim Beckman saw it either. He's been looking around the video monitor to see if he could see exactly what happened. Takes a little of the excitement out of the touchdown. It's blocked. Bill Kloss, a punter, has been forced into kicking. Brian Cassano is out with a bad knee. So the point afters could be an issue tonight. But this isn't an issue if you're a Toledo fan. Eric Page, 48 yards on the reception.
A much better start for Toledo than a year ago. Last year, Bowling Green got off to a 24 to nothing start. Now, Toledo tied it at 24 in the fourth before Bowling Green went away and won 38 24. But how about that opening drive? Eight plays, 80 yards. They even battled through a couple of penalties. Owens on the drive, two out of two, 57 yards. Well, we, we heard how good Eric Page was, but he didn't waste any time showing us, did he? No. 73 catches coming in. He kind of a little bit overshadowed by Kamar Jordan, who comes in with 80 grabs. Little squib kick at the 45-yard line after the 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike context. Bowling Green in pretty good position here. Andre, let's go back to the touchdown. Well, the formation takes the safety and moves him over to the right to almost the trip side. And now they're going to try to go over and under with a linebacker here and the safety over the top. He's got short responsibility. The safety's got it, but Eric Page going to split him and then the football. Just unbelievable throw right there. Right down and on the money from Terrence Owens. Boy, you cannot throw it any better than that. Page's eyes had to light up when he saw no safety back there as well. So here's Bowling Green. Their first possession of the game. Decent field position at the 46. Matt Schiltz to throw. Pass is caught out at the 49-yard line. Gain of about four yards. Tyrone Pronti on the reception as you look at Matt Schiltz, the 6'2", 212-pound freshman quarterback, 60% through the air. Your thoughts about Matt? I like him. You know, he's a guy that is, you know, calm, and as the season has gone on, uh, with experience, he's gotten a lot better. Just six touchdowns to 11 interceptions, but they have had all types of offensive line problems. He's been hurried most of the season. It's kind of good to see there on first down. He had a tremendous amount of time to throw the football. Bowling Green's issue really offensively has been the fact that they have not been able to run the ball very consistently. Schultz dropped, lost the football. Who's got it? I believe Toledo will have it, and they do. The 27th takeaway by the Rockets. That is tied for third most in the NCAA. Malcolm Riley with the fumble recovery. He's their most consistent defensive lineman, and, te and they get there. Both guys get there about the same time. Johnny Roberts, and then it's uh, Malcolm Raleigh coming up with the football, but you see it right there. Two guys, and then they go in, strip the football, and pouncing on it is big Malcolm Riley, the 6'3", 281-pound junior. So Bowling Green will have it at the 43-yard line. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. The play is under further review. So we'll have a chance to take more than one look at this. It looked like a fumble from our vantage point. Well, I didn't think there was any doubt that it's a fumble. You see the football come out right there. And then Malcolm Riley right there to, uh, to recover. There's no doubt this one will be Toledo's football with excellent field position. Well, you feel that pressure, Dave, and guys closing down on you. you got to protect the football. The ruling on the field is confirmed. T.J. Fatinikin on a defensive end. T.J. Fatinikin and Johnny Roberts, those guys closing in. Forcing the football out. No doubt that that one was a fumble. For Bowling Green. That is their ninth fumble of the season. They've also thrown 17 interceptions. Page making some guys miss. Down to the 35 yard line. A slippery receiver. With his second grab tonight, that's good for eight. Keith Morgan and Champ Fells finally bring him down. Boy, keep an eye on him because right here, he's all, he's going to be all over the field. They will line him up everywhere just to get the matchups they like and to get the football in his hands. And he's so good after the catch. A quarterback's best friend is a guy that can turn a little short one into the big one. Second down, we'll call it two. Off will be close to the first down. It goes to Thomas. 
Well, and he's a guy that rushed last week against Northern Illinois, 152 yards on just 10 carries. He had two touchdowns, tried to basically take the team on his back and bring and lead them back and, and got them back in the football game. And just tried to try to make it a game against Northern. Well, one of the big assets of this Toledo offense is their offensive line is combined for 139 starts. It's a wildcat formation again. And a timeout taken by Toledo. Timeout, Toledo, their first. Media timeout. So with that timeout, we'll step aside as well. Toledo already up 6 nothing and driving with 9.05 to go in the opening quarter. <laughs> Some of the Rocket faithful excited about the quick start from their club as Toledo leads Bowling Green six to nothing. Well, the fourth ranked Broncos return to the Blue Turf Friday night on ESPN2 as Chris Peters and Kelly Moore and Boise State host whack rivals Fresno State. Now another win keeps Boise State in the hunt for a place in the BCS championship game. An important contest. They all are important for Boise State. College football primetime on ESPN2 Friday at 9.30 Eastern and also available online on ESPN3.com. After the timeout, first down and 10 for the Rockets. Morgan Williams stands to the left of Terrence Owens. Owens steps up in the pocket, going deep, looking for six. And he has a touchdown, Kenny Stafford, 33 yards. They talked about the big arm of Terrence Owens and the two touchdown passes already, one to Eric Page and the other to Kenny Stafford. But you get so concerned about Eric Page, a little square in there, that you forget about the post route over the top. And he beats Adrian Spencer inside on the deep post. So Toledo will line up and try to go for two. David Pasquale will throw to the back of the end zone. They'll say incomplete. He was out of bounds. Jerome Jones, the big target, tied in at 6-7. Just couldn't keep that frame in play. They had to climb the ladder to go get the football. And believe it or not, the guy 6-7 has got to jump to go get it. But that is his momentum just takes him right on out of bounds. Oh, 
That may be reviewable. Left foot look like it may be in right there. Great camera shot. I think this one needs to be reviewed, and he's. They may find that he's in bounds. Hey, hey, run, run, run. No word as of yet. It looked like the toe came down in bounds. Hey, you need well, the guys one upstairs foot. are certainly looking it's at it right now. Foot. They have a few extra seconds. Well, look at that. I mean, that is great camera work right there. Left foot or left toe comes down, and all it's got to do is just touch. And then the heel comes down out of bounds. Maybe they'll blow this one and take a Someone look at it. Tackle the, tackle oh, the the Stafford guy. picks up his third touchdown reception of the season. Nephew of former Ohio State Buckeye and NFL great Chris Carter making the grab. And Beckman can't believe that his club has missed an opportunity for a couple of point afters. Andrew Elkert with the kick. Tyrone Fonte hit at the 30 and dropped on the spot. 15 yard return and so the Bowling Green offense will take the field for the second time. Well they get so concerned right here you're going to get Eric Page who runs the end and then now you got a, a post route behind it and you get so concerned with what Eric Page is going to do the square in right there that he draws the safety down and leaves the middle of the field just wide open you throw to the other goal post if you're Terrence Owens and boy what a nice strike and catch from Kenny Strafford. So Bowling Green will try to hold on to the football. That's been a big issue for them this season. That pass incomplete. Time for us to take a look at tonight's impact players. Brought to you by Tommy Hilfiger and Willie Jeter's a guy they're going to have to count on. They're going to have to get some running game going tonight. Yeah, he's a guy that can hit. He just needs a crack, and they really want to get him going in this football game. Take some pressure off the young quarterback, Lamar Jordan. We've talked about him. The 80 receptions, fourth in the FBS in receptions. And then Dan Moles, he's a guy that leads the defense for Toledo. Moles with 106 run, 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 total run, tackles run, run. this year. His linebacker made Archie Donald. Checks in with 104. Go! Schultz. And a scramble. Through the hands of his intended target, Kamar Jordan. A little hot on the pass from Schultz. There is Dave Clawson. 9 and 13, 9 and 14 in his second year at Bowling Green. Took this club to a bowl game last year in his first go round with the Falcons. Boy, and he has just been decimated with injuries, particularly on the offensive line. And I mean, it's just patchwork up front and you got a young quarterback playing behind an inexperienced offensive line. It has been tough going for Bowling Green, but they've been in a lot of football games, five to be exact, that came down to the final play. Schiltz, he's going deep. Talk about big arms, he's got one. That'll be incomplete, looking for Kamar Jordan down that far sideline. Up a fourth down and ten, so not much happening for Bowling Green offensively. Oh, that they, matter defensively. Either. You know, you want to control the clock a little bit, move the football, move the chains, because Toledo's proven early that they can strike, and, and uh, all of a sudden this starts resembling the Philadelphia Eagles, Washington Redskins. If you don't get a a uh, grip on this baby, you see Michael Vick the other night. Was that just sick? Unbelievable. He is. Just an unbelievable home. athlete. Okay, Eric right. Page dropped at the 20 yard line. A 51 yard punt. Boo Boo Gage with a big special teams tackle, but Toledo has scored twice. They have the football back in a moment.
Well, Toledo is putting on a show right now offensively. They have run 11 plays. They have 128 yards, 98 of those through the air by that man, Terrence Owens. He'll line up in a little pistol formation. David Fluell and the true freshman tailback behind the quarterback, Owens. And Fluell will get the handoff. Nice little move out over the 30, now to the 35. Drag it some defenders with him, Dwayne Woods. Among the Bowling Green defenders, a gain of 18 on that play. Well, let's take a look at Terrence Owens. And you see him here, the touchdown pass to Eric Page right on the money, never having to break stride. And it comes right back to Kenny Stafford. Accurate with the football. A nice start for the red shirt freshman. Owens four out of four with a couple of TDs. Thomas in the game at running back. They'll swing it to him. Adonis. Ooh. He's got the first down and then some. Thomas down to the 41-yard line. 21 yards on that pickup. Well, the thing you admire about Terrence Owens when you watch him on film is he gets the football out right there, reads it, knows where the defenders are, and gets the football into his playmaker's hand so they can catch the football on the run. Accurate throws, Dave, when you operate fast and allow your playmakers to make plays. Quick snap. Owens will keep it. Look at out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. There's another little dimension that he has as well that we haven't talked about, his ability to make plays with his legs. You get so focused in on him throwing the football, getting rid of it, or on Thomas or Fluellen that he can hurt you with his legs as well. Nice dual threat quarterback coaches are certainly excited about his future. He'll sling it down the field. Looking for Tim Cortazzo and touchdown Toledo. 35 yards. His first touchdown reception of the season. Sixth reception of the year and Eric Page was a high school quarterback who moved a receiver and the reason why he has such a good feel for running routes as he, he played on the other end of it. Played quarterback, knows where he's supposed to go, and there they throw it out to him, and nice accurate pass to Tim Cortaza. He threw a touchdown pass against Eastern Michigan as well. The extra point this time is good, so Toledo's lead is 19 to nothing, and they have made it look real easy. We well, see it here, just a nice lateral, and he didn't waste any time. Saw that Cortaza was wide open, Behind the safety, Javon Leacock gets the football out where he waited a little bit, but not long. Toledo off to a fantastic start. Eric Page is, uh, he said he was an athlete. We're seeing a little bit of everything from him tonight. Described him as the heartbeat of their offense. They've got to get him the football. Great hands, great route runner. And the first three drives, all touchdowns. Two of those operated by Terrence Owens, and then Eric Cage involved in there again. We've played a little over seven minutes here, and it's almost like it's a joke almost. Toledo with 209 yards of offense. Bowling Green has three. I'm telling you, it has that Philadelphia Eagles flavor to it earlier. Elkert will kick it off for Toledo. Taken by Pronti. And he is swarmed and dropped at the 23-yard line. A 10-yard return. Mark Singer, the first one on the spot for the Rockets. Well, Saturday afternoon, ABC delivers a battle in the Big Ten as Terrell Pryor leads the Buckeyes into Iowa for a tough road test against Ricky Stanzi and the Hawkeyes. Ohio State must win to remain in contention for the Rose Bowl. It's college football presented by K Jewelers on ABC at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Well, now if you're bowling green, you got to get Matt Schultz some easy throws, kind of get his feet under him and take a little pressure off the offensive line as well. well their first possession lasted two plays. They fumbled. Their second possession was three and out. That handoff goes to Willie Jeter. Mark Singer will bring it down a gain of four. 
Jeter ranks 10th all time in Bowling Green rushing yards. Just over 2,000. And coaches, they started the season. They really wanted to get him 1,000 yards for his senior year and send him out on a high note. Willie Jeter and you know, it's just been the offensive line problems unable to really establish a running game. You talked to Dave Clausen and he points that their woes offensively can be directed right to the fact that they can't run the ball. An example is Jeter has 600 yards rushing. The team has 600 yards rushing. Big hit at the 35 yard line. Tyrone Pronti was the intended receiver. Deontay Morrow with a big hit from his safety position. Yeah, he comes in and what they call or describe as their speed package and a transfer from Iowa. We'll see him here. He just kind of gets a nice jump on the football and kind of separates Tyrone Pronti from the football. Big guy, six foot, 199 pounds. Nice size for a safety. And look for some pressure right here on third down. Mike Ward, their defensive coordinator, when you get to third down. He will dial up the pressure. Schiltz has time in the pocket. Looking for Jordan. It's incomplete. And that will bring up another fourth down situation. You see the pressure that Mike Ward's going to bring. You see the linebackers come here. They're going to come late, but they time it up just right to describe it. I mean, excuse me, to. Uh, to kind of get there to time it and force Matt Schultz to get rid of the football. Ryan Wright will punt it away. Fourth in the Mac in punting. The pressure almost got to the football. Fair catch call for the 35 yard line. A 38 yard punt. Bernard Reedy with the fair catch. Look at the West Division in the back, and you will see Northern Illinois now controls their own destiny. A couple of games left in the conference for Northern Illinois. Toledo needs uh, some help. They had a chance, but uh, they lost 65 to 30. Fell behind 28 to nothing last Wednesday night. And over in the East, Ohio looks like they're in pretty good control. Looked pretty good last night. Yes, they did in the downpour. Bowling Green sitting there at one and five in conference play. David Pasquale in at quarterback. That handoff goes to Morgan Williams, a gain of a couple. And a Morgan Williams, interesting story. He, as a freshman, rushed for over 1,000 yards and out of high school. Ran for over 2,400 yards his junior and senior year. Was the, uh, the uh, Ohio Player of the Year two years. I mean, and then all of a sudden he can't find the field. Thomas, Fluellen. Carries have been limited for Morgan Williams. He had a school record 330 yards rushing against Miami of Ohio as a freshman back in 2008. Pass is caught to Thomas. He'll pick up the first down over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Boy, what you like. Woods and Leacock on the stop. Boy, what you like is that he didn't waste any time getting up the field, squared his shoulders up, knowing where the down and distance marker is and get him the football quickly accurate and out in front and allow him to make a play for you to move the chains excellent throw and catch Owens six out of six throwing the football 129 yards and two touchdowns well, he has been as good as advertised throwing pages one completion and they're perfect through the air we'll hand it off to Adonis Thomas will get three, maybe four on the carry. Darius Smith with his second tackle. The defensive end out of Euclid, Ohio. It's taken Thomas a little while, but he's had a good run the last four games. Really starting to play well. And getting a nice feel for it. And sometimes when you, you, know, you go through some adjustments at the beginning of the season. Four man look from the Falcons. Owens will keep it. This tackle by Bowling Green allows Owens to pick up the first down around the 42 yard line. A nine yard pickup. Wayne Woods finally brings him down. But the missed tackle came from Lewis Parks, who had a chance to drop him for no gain. Boy, and they're just begging for Terrence Owens to run the football because they're so deep. 
that it's just tailor made for a quarterback draw. 4 2 look, just two linebackers, and they take off out of the frame, and now it's just you're just begging an athletic quarterback like Terrence Owens to pull the football down and make a play with his legs. Over to run for Thomas. He is swallowed up by those white jerseys. A loss of two on the play. Champ Fells, Chris Jones led the way. Let's go back and take a look, and you'll see the deep drops right here by the linebackers. They're already about six yards deep from the football. Now they're going to drop out to take on receivers. And look at the alley. Look at the hole there for Terrence Owens to pick up the first down. I think Dave Neal could go down and, and maybe pick up a first down with that look. You just got a big chuckle on everybody in the booth. <laughs> they all looked at you, that's for sure. Morgan Williams will split out. Owens will throw. Over the middle, passes. Brad Reed lost the football. They'll say that he recovered it and will be just shy, it looks like, of the first down. And Morgan Williams coming from outside in is going to pick up the football here, the fumble. But Bernard Reed, he catches it in stride. Now you got to put it away. I don't know if he had control of that. It will say it's a first down. You wouldn't get a play run if you're uh, Toledo and Matt Campbell before they blow the whistle and uh, take a look at him. Yeah, and here comes the whistle. There's a recovery by the offense. The play is under further review. I think this will go the other way. I think this is an incomplete pass. Ruling is a catch and a fumble. Let's take a look at it. Bernard Reedy right here. Nice little square in. Gets some separation. and Ball comes out. Can't really tell. Dwayne Woods is the guy that forces the fumble. Right here. Nice. This is a better look. Trying to put it away and it comes out. Nice touchy. Maybe the first incompletion for Terrence Owens of the football game. Right there. Really doesn't have control of it quite yet. It's going to be an incomplete pass. They've already moved the chain, so we're going to spend probably an extra minute or two trying to figure out where the ball was, get the clock set. Never really secured it and made the football move to really call it a completion. It's about the first thing that's gone wrong for Toledo tonight. <laughs> you aren't kidding. They were raving about Terrence Owens and the way he can throw the football. And take a look at it here. Nice eyes. Delivers it out in front. Still kind of moving around there and it's never really put away. I think this is going to be a, an incomplete pass. And I think they're just going to try to figure out where the, to put the football. Make sure we got it on the right hash mark. The right time on the clock. There's a look at Tim Beckman. For a defensive guy, he certainly has a versatile offense. <laughs> well, and, and I talked to him as well about uh, you know, kind of giving up the reins to Mike Ward, their de their coordinator, and calling the defenses. We'll get a, a ruling here. After further review, the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. It'll be third down, 12 yards to go. Please reset the game clock to three minutes, 12 seconds. Well, the initial ruling was a completed pass, and they moved the chains. But then there, I think it was overturned in the replay booth. Video evidence showed that uh, it was a was not a secure catch by Bernard Reedy, and put away. So uh, they're going to back Thank it you. up and play third down here. Well, the first incompletion for Terrence Owens. He's now six of seven, 129 yards and two touchdowns. 3:12 to go in the opening quarter. Going back to that story real quick, I said, how hard was it being a coordinator for 14 years on defense to, to give up uh, the reins to Mike Ward? And he said, extremely hard. Yeah. <laughs> he did not want to surrender it, but he trusts his coaching staff, and he's got a ton of other things to oversee as he builds this program here at Toledo. Coached with some pretty good coaches, Jim Tressel at Ohio State. 
Gundy down at uh, Oklahoma State. His father also a college and NFL coach. He's been around the game his whole life. Matter of fact, he says since he's born, he's been around for a while. Loves the game. Here's Owens on third down. He'll step in the pocket. That ball is incomplete. And Bowling Green, by virtue of a little help from the replay booth, will bring up a fourth down. And here comes what appears to be the punting unit for Toledo. Well, they go to their playmaker, Eric Page, and try to try to convert on third down. He is the guy that they want to go to and get the football in his hands, especially when it's third down. Gene Cooper back to return the punt. And spins out to punt it away. 46 punts, almost 41 per punt. He's had one block this year. Gets that one away, and it is not a good one. That will be spotted somewhere near the line of scrimmage, I'm thinking. That went out of bounds in a hurry. They will spot it at the 34-yard line. The Bowling Green's offense will head back on the field. But ABC Saturday Night Football delivers regional action. Most of the nation will see Taylor Martinez lead the eighth-ranked Cornhuskers against Brian Tannehill and a tough Texas A&M team. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. Now, some of the nation will see Florida State versus Maryland or USC take on Oregon State. Go to ESPN.com and search MAPS, M-A-P-S, to see where you can find your game. Here are the Falcons. Here's Jeter trying to find some running room, maybe a yard. Andre, how are they going to get going offensively? What do they need to do? I mean, is it a, you need to razzle dazzle them, spread them out? What? Well, the, the easiest thing for an offensive line is just to allow them to come off the football and try to establish the run with with Willie Jeter. And he's an A gap type of runner, a guy that will start inside and he likes to bounce outside. Well, we got to. An injured player here for for Bowling Green, and it's Willie Jeter, the, the, the one player that they really could ill afford to lose. Jordan Hopgood is another guy at tailback. It's a wildcat kind of running back. He has 60 carries on the season, Jordan Hopgood, but uh, the guy that really makes it go for Bowling Green is. Is, is the player there, Willie Jeter. You try to run the stretch and allow him to get outside and opposite of what they really like to do with him and cut it back in, but oof, well, he gets about four players that comes down on his right. Looks like that his, right knee there. Yeah, on his right Whoa. leg. He's kind of up and walking off on his own power. Which is always a good thing to see when a player can make it to the sideline on his own. So Jordan Hopgood comes in at tailback now, standing next to Matt Schiltz. Second down and eight. Schiltz. Dumps it off to Hopgood. Hopgood out to the 43 yard line. That's his eighth catch of the year, gain of six. Desmond Marrow with the tackle. Archie Donald also coming in to make the play. Well, I'm going to show you something here. When, when Bowling Green gets set at the line of scrimmage, Ben Boychic, their center. And you really don't see this ever. It's number 61. And you'll see him right there, left-handed center. You never see that. You'll see that left hand go down on it, Why onto not? the football. Why don't you see it? It's just an odd way, and you're used to, uh, every quarterback used to getting it from with your right hand on top. And unless you're a left-handed guy, it's just it's, it's so uncomfortable. He's taking 100,000 snaps one way, and then... Yeah, and then it's coming up on the other side, and, and uh, you just really don't see it. Most lefties, if they're at center, they're taught to snap with their right hand, but they didn't do that with him, and he's a junior. They've had some pretty good ones at Bowling Green come through. Scott Murkowski in the National Football League. Corey Lichtensteiger also in the National Football League. I mean, I, I saw that 
and uh, it was just just kind of odd when you when you uh, when you point when you see it on film it's amazing. Page with a fair catch inside the 10 they'll mark it down around the eight yard line a nice kick by Brian Wright of 50 yards time for some national headlines and of course the top four in the BCS remain unbeaten but three of those are idle this week Oregon Auburn and TCU you can catch uh, of course Boise State on Friday night as they host Fresno State Ohio State at Iowa on Saturday the Buckeyes need two wins to share the Big Ten title but uh, you know Mark Slayball my buddy at ESPN.com on his bowl predictions has Boise playing in the Sugar Bowl against Auburn setting up an Oregon TCU BCS title game. Out to the 14 yard line goes Morgan Williams. What do you think about that? I gotta believe if both Oregon and Auburn run the table that, that's the matchup in the, in the BCS National Championship game. Uh, and, and imagine for a second two dynamic offenses Cam Newton at Auburn and you talk about uh, Chip Kelly's offense and the way they run plays at Oregon boy that would be one heck of a matchup still a little work left to be done you don't think the Iron Bowl the week from Friday is going to be oh, yeah. worth watching do you <laughs> handoff goes to Morgan Williams nothing happened on that play that'll bring up third down and here's a look at what Oregon, Auburn, TCU, and Boise State have in front of them. For Oregon, it's Arizona, then Oregon State, and Auburn, Alabama, and then that rematch with South Carolina in the SEC title game. TCU has a date with New Mexico and Boise State Friday night against Fresno State, then Nevada and Utah State. I just think the road for Auburn is just uh, full of potholes, especially with everything that's swirling around. Cam Newton in that program right now can't yeah. make it easy. Here's Owens. That pass was caught, then dropped. Uh, they'll say incomplete. Tim Cortazzo never had possession of the football. Adrian Spencer was on the coverage. Boy, he did a nice job of getting that football out. Tim Cortazzo, I thought, had this reception, but he's being fought by Adrian Spencer right there and just enough to get the football out, never really secured it. And almost came up with a nice interception. Two year starter at, cor at cornerback. And his brother, Anthony, is a starter with the Dallas Cowboys. So he's a pretty athletic family there. Lynch Benson to punt it away. Eugene Cooper will let it bounce and it'll sail out of bounds. A 31 yard punt. Back to back. Aaron punts from Pinza. That'll set Bowling Green up with their best field position of the evening. And Dave Clawson's offense needs to get it cranked up. This is a group that's on the season scoring 23 points a game. That is seventh in a 13 team conference, but they're only averaging 60 yards a game rushing. Yeah, that's where it's been tough. 120th in the country in, in rushing per game. And it's just been tough when you when you have a young quarterback and you can't run the football boy you're going to see some pressure when you get into passing situations. Good news for Falcon fans is Willie Jeter is back on the field and he'll get the handoff. Looks pretty good on that knee that was banked up a few plays ago. A gain of two for Willie Archie Donald leading the way for the Rockets. That will do it for the first 15 minutes here in the glass bowl. It is all Toledo to this point. 19 zip, the Rockets out in front.
ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Lexus. This is the pursuit of tomorrow. This is the pursuit of perfection. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. The Rockets have lost three straight to the rivals just 27 miles away. But tonight, they are cruising along 19 to nothing after the first quarter. Look at the total yards, 241 to 12. That is not a typo. <laughs> but they've got some pretty good field position, just a couple of scores down and put one in. You just got to get them one at a time or as you can get them. Here's Jeter. He's to the 40-yard line, a gain of five. Well, that'll help, help the confidence of the offensive line, help Matt Schultz, the redshirt freshman quarterback, settle in. So it's Ben Boychuk, the left-handed center. And Andre, he's played on a really bad shoulder. They didn't know how much they'd get out of him tonight. Yeah. If he can't go, uh, they'll bring in Scott Lewis, and they'll just try to work those two guys in at center, see if they can get a full game. You see the brace on the right shoulder, and there goes the left hand of the football. A big time rival game. You're going to make sure you're in it. If you're Ben Boyton. Schultz, nowhere to go. Pocket collapsed in a hurry. A loss of seven on the play. Malcolm Riley, Dan Moles. Well, they came in with 27 sacks on the season, and you see the pressure. Third down, it's you're sitting there with a long yardage situation or down in distance, and the pressure's coming. They're going to dial it up. And they're able to get there. A lot of Toledo Rockets around the football. No chance for Schiltz. A punt will hit inside the five, bounce around, and downed by Bowling Green. They'll say it was touched around the three by Boo Gates, and that is where Toledo will have the football. But time for us to check in with Mike Yam for a sports center right now. something every day for a while concerning Cam Newton, I'm sure. Out of the pistol formation, Fluella gets the handoff, and he's met right at the line, maybe lost a yard in the process. Chris Jones, nose tackle, 6'2", 290, kind of blowing things up in the middle. More great penetration on the part of Chris Jones, and, you know, for a defensive tackle, he's the guy that leads him in sacks with six sacks on the year. And you see what great explosion out of his stance. Eight and a half tackles for loss this year. He's really the engine in that front four. Yeah. Owens. Picked off. A flag is down at the line of scrimmage, but that ball is picked off around the 13-yard line by Cameron Truss. His second interception of the season, if it stands. We shall see. The second interception thrown by Terrence Owens this year as well. So that'll obviously be declined, and Bowling Green is now in business and has a little momentum. Cameron Truss, who's playing on a bad wheel, comes up with a huge play. Well, it's man-to-man -man coverage and comes right out of the route with the receiver. Excellent footwork, and the coaches describe him as their best cover corner. Tim Cordazzo, you'll see him right there, tries to run a little comeback on the outside, and nice job by Cameron Truss, getting the feet down inbounds as well. So here's Bowling Green. At the 13-yard line, Jeter, seven yards deep in the backfield. He'll get the handoff about three yards deep in the backfield. Dan Moles on a blitz. He's a true sophomore that played quite a bit as a true freshman. And his father played at, uh, at Kentucky. 
father Andy played at Kentucky with uh, with coach Tim Beckman but you'll see him right here great penetration gets into the backfield and almost meets Willie Jeter at the mesh point with the quarterback now 110 tackles on the year for Dan Moles. Schiltz will throw. It's Alex Bayer, the tight end. That'll get him back to the original line of scrimmage. That's Bayer's 19th reception on the season. Try to set up a little screen, but it seems as though there are blue jerseys everywhere, just swarming all over the field. And trying to find the right combination of plays to get a drive going and to get some points and get back in this football game for Bowling Green. Bowling Green's been pretty good in the red zone this year, 83%, third in the MAC, 20 touchdowns and 30 trips. And been decent on third downs at 37% on the season. 0 for 4 tonight here in the glass ball. That pass is caught, and that'll be six. Calvin Wiley goes 13 yards on the reception. Tyquan Page on the coverage. And now Bowling Green has broken through. A nice throw here. He finally got some time, Matt Schultz, to deliver the football. And right there, nice adjustment to the football by Calvin Riley. And then the, the run after the catch to get it into the end zone. But it all starts with protection. You're going to throw the football, that big offensive line has got to hold up for you. Now Burkhart with the point after. It is up and it is good. So Bowling Green pulls within a dozen as Matt Schiltz tosses his seventh touchdown of the season. Back in a moment. Here's Cameron Truss, redshirt freshman, former walk-on, comes up with a huge interception to set up the Bowling Green touchdown. Well, he's a sixth-year senior, former high school quarterback who had two ACL surgeries. And it's just uh, Marvin Wiley. Trying to get him back in the football game. Let's go, Eric! So Bowling Green will kick it off. Brian Wright back deep is Eric Page. 
At the 10. Good special teams coverage from Bowling Green's Austin Collier. As we go back to the touchdown. Well, they're going to clear it out with Tyrone Ponte right here in the rub route with, uh, with Calvin Wiley. And then a missed tackle by Tyquan Page is what makes this play. You see it right there. They clear it out. He rubs. And then the missed tackle allows Calvin Wiley to get himself into the end zone. But nice protection right there for Matt Schultz. And then you got to have some players make plays after the catch for you. So out of the pistol formation again. Owens will hand it off. Big run from Thomas. Here goes Adonis Thomas. He may take it to the house. And he will. There are no flags. 81 yards. Oh, well, just like that, missed tackles. Adrian Spencer right there on the on the right there misses the tackle which allows Adonis Thomas to make a house call. What after is up and good from Bill Clawson. Just like that. Before you blink, Adonis Thomas goes 81 yards. The junior out of Newark, New Jersey, with his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. are soaring tonight that is for sure 26 points and just over a little little over a quarter 26 to 7 over Bowling Green and there is Adonis Thomas with the fourth longest scoring play in Toledo football history 81 yards well, he threw a sick move on Keith Morgan to kind of get himself into the open field and made Adrian Spencer miss a tackle we will see you later bye bye Eight carries, 98 yards. Not a bad start for Adonis Thomas. Not quite the 10 for 152 he <laughs> no, had last he's week. He's got some work to do, doesn't he? <laughs> Tyrone Pronti on the return out over the 35 to the 39. But here's Thomas and what he's done tonight. You can see him right here and just a nice job of being patient, setting up blocks. Making guys miss tackles out in the open field, you know, and exactly 
or the down and distance partner. Look at that sick move. And then the speed to get it to the house. Adonis Thomas. Newark, New Jersey. Jordan Hopgood in at running back, standing to the left of Matt Schiltz. Schiltz flushed out of the pocket again. This time the pass is caught around the 47 yard line to Adrian Hodges. Nice footwork in the pocket, sliding and buying himself a little time. He felt a little pressure. He's able to locate a receiver. Got to keep your eyes down the field. If you feel the pressure and moving around, buy yourself some time so you can locate receivers. We're tied into the game for Bowling Green. Hopgood had a chance, but tripped up around the 50 yard line. Right. Four. Such a game of emotion. You, you're bowling green and you're starting to feel pretty good about yourself. The touchdown pass to Calvin Wiley, and you're right back in the game. And then one play later, Adonis Thomas hits you for the big one. Nick Lawson saying, Young man, you got to stay on your feet. Nobody hits you. Willie Jeter back in the game at tailback. First down and 10. Bowling green. Into Toledo territory. Jeter comes in motion to the near side. Empty set now. Pressure comes. Schultz sees it. It's Jordan. And he lost the football. I think Toledo has it. They're going to say Jordan was down. Our back judge came flying in to say that Jordan was down on the ground. No fumble. I don't know about that. 22 yards on the pickup. Went to the naked eye, he looked like he was still trying to make a move. And right here, you're going to see him right here try to make a move. And then from behind, football comes out. Oh, that's a loose football. And I think that one, they're going to definitely have to take a look at this. Excellent throw and catch, but then you got to secure the football. Yeah, definitely got to look at this one. This was going to be Toledo's football. TJ Fatinikin forces the fumble. Now that's his second forced fumble of the football game. And our microphone looks like it has gone out on the field. How about that though? So a defensive end, TJ Fatinikin getting down the field. He calls one where he came in in the, with a sack on uh, Matt Schultz that he shared with, uh, with Johnny Roberts, but then coming, getting down the field to catch a receiver from behind and reach in there and force the fumble. Right there, he loses possession. The ball is definitely out. Archie Donald will come up with the football. That's great hustle right there. You like seeing that? That's going to make Mike Ward, their defensive coordinator. He and Paul Nichols, they co coordinate the defense, but that's going to make them happy right there. You see a big guy hustling down the field and then making a play. Excellent job. I think that Isaiah Ballard with the fumble recovery. And Ron Snodgrass, our referee today, lost his microphone, but we certainly know what he is waiting to hear, whether it was. We can translate, can we? A little bit. I think we I watch think the signals and know what's being called. Let's take another look at it. TJ Fatinigan right there coming in from behind. Ball is out. Possession's lost. Ball is definitely out before he touches. And then Toledo comes up with a football. Isaiah Ballard on the fumble recovery. These two teams have been phenomenal at getting the football. They're in the top three in the country in takeaways. 26 takeaways coming in tonight for the Rockets. On the flip side, how about Bowling Green with 28 takeaways? Problem with Bowling Green is they've coughed it up 25 times on their own. Here comes. We're close to getting decision from our referee, Ron Snodgrass. And I think this, see, his microphone doesn't work. And I think he's a little confused on how he's supposed to handle this. <laughs> Just yell really loudly. 
<laughs> yeah, there you yeah, go. There That's, you go. Just right there. <laughs> That's it right there. It's ruled a fumble, yeah. which uh, we thought it would be. That's just a great play by defensive end turning the run to track down one of the better receivers in the uh, in the map. And Kamar Jordan. And for Tennekin with another hustle play. You wouldn't know this Toledo team got hammered pretty good last Wednesday. By Northern Illinois, 65 to 30. By the way, they're playing here tonight. 9:32 to go before halftime. Toledo with the football up 26 to 7. Here's Bernard Reedy on a little end around. He'll take it out over the 35 to the 36 yard line. Bernard Give us a chance to check in with Mike Yam in our studios. Mike. Eight yards. Eight yards. Sizzling start this year. The pop doesn't have them in it every year. <laughs> Nothing happening for Thomas. So they had a good read on number 24 as he loses a yard. Chris Jones with another tackle behind the line. He's their best pass rusher. We talked about, and that's kind of—it's a little odd because he's inside a defensive tackle. Kind of shows you the quickness in which he gets off the football, and he had five st five stops last year against Idaho in the Humanitarian Bowl. What a nice bowl game. Page goes in motion, and he'll get the football. And that'll be good enough for the first down at the 37, make it 38 yard line, but a flag down. Around the 45 yard line behind the play. So I couldn't get a number on that, obviously, but that'll back. Back up the Rockets on pass interference against the offense. It really wasn't a uh, a deal where it looked like a, a receiver was trying to screen for for Eric Page to get open. It happened so fast and the ball came out so fast. A little hard to believe that there was time for a uh, a pass interference call on the offense. Once again for Bowling Green, a team that is the most penalized in the MAC. 80 times coming into the night. They have been flagged. Empty set for Terrence Owens, who got off to a great start, but is going four incompletions in a row. They'll go on the ground to Morgan Williams, and Williams will get it out to the 24 yard line on what was a third down and 18. And here comes the punt team. You're going to see Morgan Williams. Nobody over him when he's out here. Then they motion him back in here. He's out here. Nobody there. They bring him back inside and then try to run the football. A little draw play and have it pop. The Bowling Green, nice job defensively to rally to the football. A lot of white jerseys around the football. It's Pinson. Finally gets his foot into one. And that sends Eugene Cooper all the way back inside the 20. Some flags are down. A couple of flags down as Cooper takes it out over the 30. A 53 yard punt. But this will not be good news for Bowling Green. Well, this is definitely a block in the back. <laughs> it was just so obvious. Didn't get a number yet. So that'll back Bowling Green up. 
Well, you think it's a pretty good field position or a decent field position, then now you're going backwards. That's been the kind of night, uh, that's the kind of night it's been for Dave Fawcett and company. But there is quite a bit of quarterback history in the MAC. We'll take a look at some of the guys that have made a name for themselves at the next level. Good look at the big strong arm of Bruce Gradkowski. Played quarterback here for Toledo. His club right now up big time 26 to 7 as we take a look at our life's good flashback brought to you by LG. Some notable Mid America Conference quarterbacks. Some guys that have made some great names for themselves, not only in the MAC, but in the NFL. Byron Leftwich first saw Chad Pennington. Byron played at Marshall from 98 to 02. And of course, Big Ben Roethlisberger, Miami Slim. of Ohio, 01 to 03. Slim down version of Big Ben. <laughs> yeah. And there is Bruce Gretkowski, played here in Toledo, 2002 to 2005. And those are just uh, a few of the guys. There are more than that that have come out of this league. Go, 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 go. 26 to 7, Toledo out in front. Bowling Green backed up inside the 15. They just can't run the football right now. A gain of one for Willie Jeter, Malcolm Riley with the tackles. We look at some of those quarterbacks that have gone on to uh, some pretty good success. Yeah, Charlie Fry from Akron played with the Cleveland Browns for a while. Dan Lefevre really liked him. Boy, did he have a great career at Central Michigan. And one thing, those guys that all kind of stand out to me, they were all just tough as nails quarterbacks. Yeah. Not afraid. Take a shot, get right back up, and do it again. Little swing pass out to Jeter. Nice move. That'll be close to the first down. See if he stepped out of bounds before the 20. They'll mark it actually right at the 20 yard line. A gain of seven. Dan Moles runs him out of bounds. Right now, the best offensive option is Willie Jeter. They've got to figure out a way to get Kamar Jordan involved in this as well. And the guy comes in with. 80 receptions on the season. He's a big part of your offense. And Lee Jeter, he's going to need a, a little spell here before long. Got his knee twisted up. Little guy gutting it out. Here goes Jordan in motion. Third down and a couple. Pressure coming from the outside. Schilt steps up, fires pass complete. Out to the 26 yard line. That goes to Kamar Jordan once again. Kamar came into this one with 80 catches on the year. A nice job there finding a soft spot in the zone. And linebackers kind of sitting inside waiting as he goes in motion. They drop in the zone coverage. Now just show the numbers to the quarterback. Don't overrun it. 
Don't get all the way in the hip pocket of Dan Moles. He don't want to go in there. Jamar with a second catch. Leads the back fourth in the NCAA in receptions. Play fake to Jeter. Schultz has time, but pulls the ball down and is tripped up back around the 18, and a flag comes in to boot. A loss of eight. It'll be a face mask on Malcolm Riley, the defensive lineman that got there early. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Number 97. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, you could tell the body language right away. He got there. He's going to get the sack on Matt Schultz and just grab the face mask right here. Nice job and a good pass rush. And keeping it just kind of fighting and could not let it go. Just reached back to grab a handful of jersey and he's and he finds face mask. He's being blocked, engaged with an offensive lineman. He's trying to get a hand on the quarterback. Here's Jeter. Jeter stays on his feet into Toledo territory at the 45 yard line. That's a gain of 14 and a first down for the Falcons. Get, get a score here before halftime. They'd be right back in the football game. Nice blocking up front. Jeter gets to the second level, then into the third level before the Toledo players are able to bring him down. But nice seal block. Ben Boychich, the center inside, turning things out. And a nice little running lane for Willie Jeter. Four man look from the Rockets. Ron Pronti goes in motion. Schiltz. He's going deep. Overthrows Jordan Hopgood. That'll be incomplete. Bring up second down. One of the pass protection a little bit better because of the running game with Willie Jeter. Now you can't just tee off and come after the red shirt freshman. You got to play run on the way to the quarterback. It's given uh, Matt Schultz just enough time to identify some receivers. Now you got uh, Jordan Hopgood running wide open. Just put it on it. Find a way to just complete passes and move the chains. Schultz got off to a very slow start. One out of six, but he's now eight out of 15. And not sure why we. Have a stoppage in play, maybe a sideline warning. Okay. Here we go. Got it taken care of, whatever it was. <laughs> well, that microphone's going, and you can't figure out how to turn that baby no, off. It didn't work for a while, now he's excited about it, he wants to use it. <laughs> Schultz. Check with me, and they say go with the play call. Here's Jeter. Met right in the middle by Archie Donald. Gain of four. Finding the success right inside between the two guards. Dominic Llewellyn, the left guard, Ben Boychik, the center, and Chip Robinson, the right guard. That's where it's. Uh, where they've been able to run the football here so far in the first half. Three thirty to go in the opening half. Third down and seven. Over to the right hash mark. Incomplete. Looking for Jordan into triple coverage. Now to bring up a fourth down and seven. And Jermaine Robinson, the strong safety there. And it's there are a lot of blue jerseys in that area. He's trying to squeeze one into his playmaker, Kamar Jordan, who had enough yards for enough distance for the first down. He's on a little bit behind him. Brian Wright to punt it away again for Bowling Green. Eric Page stands at the 10. Fair catch call for and Page drops it around the 12, but will reclaim the pigskin, a 30-yard punt. And Toledo is backed up inside their own 15 with 3.16 to play in the opening half. 26-7, the Rockets out in front. 
back to Toledo in a moment. So fast, hard to see Oregon <laughs> when they're playing. Boy, they are lightning. It's, it's unbelievable. They uh, couldn't put up 50 last week. Cal held him in check. See what Toledo does here. 316 to go. Up 26 to 7. Got off to a great start. Trouble converting the point afters. Missed the extra point and a two point conversion. That sailed through the hands of Adonis Thomas. That was a dangerous play. That'll bring up a second down and 10. It stops the clock for Bowling Green with 313. But Terrence Owens got off to a great start. Six out of six. But since then, it's misfired on his five attempts. with a stutter step. They'll take it out of the 20 to the 21. That'll bring up a third down and let's call it two. Well, the fourth ranked Broncos return to the blue turf Friday night on ESPN2. Chris Peterson, Kellen Moore, Boise State will host WAC rivals Fresno State. Another win keeps Boise State in the hunt for a place in the BCS championship game. College football primetime on ESPN2 Friday at 9.30 Eastern and also available online on ESPN3. Dot com. So after the eight yard pickup, third short. Thomas will fall forward to the 25. That'll be good enough for the first down. A gain of four. Darius Smith, defensive end, making the stop for the Falcons. And Thomas, just 175 pounds, but boy, does he run with a physical running style. Not afraid to take on defenders in the hole between the tackles. And then we've, he's already proven to us that he can hit the home run. Third 100 yard game. 101 yards now for Thomas. Here's Thomas through the air. He's got plenty of turf in front of him. Thomas inside the 40. Down to the 37 yard line. Adrian Spencer drags him down, but not before Thomas picks up 38 more yards. When I tell you, what makes the play is Terrence Owens getting the football out fast and it allowed Adonis Thomas to make a move and make a defender miss and get him into the open field where he can just pick up additional yardage but boy do they operate Terrence Owens you talked about him cooling off now he's he gets it out fast though I like that basketball in at quarterback inside handoff goes to Williams gain of two you know if you if most quarterbacks or a lot of them don't get it out they're still holding it but it's out in front it allows a guy to make a move, make a defender miss. Otherwise, the guy's, you know, face mask to, to uh, shoulder pads, and it's a form tackle, and he's coming back at you looking funny, looking at you funny in the huddle. But you, if you get it to him fast, they can make a move, and then it's the yards after the catch that you love as a quarterback. 171 yards of offense for Thomas, 101 on the ground, 70 through the air. Williams. 
Gets the swing pass. He makes a couple of guys miss. Still on his feet and tripped himself up. <laughs> he spun around one too many times. He'll still pick up. Give him seven, maybe eight on the play. He makes Dwayne Woods miss, who's there. Basically their best tackler on the defensive side of the football. But once again, Terrence Owens get the football in it. And it's not an easy thing to do when you're catching shotgun snaps and having to mold the football and then get it out. But it, it takes a lot of reps to get used to that. Toledo will take a timeout with 55 seconds before halftime. It gets you caught up on what has happened so far. Eric Page with a big time catch to start the scoring. And then Owens goes again this time. He will hit Kenny Stafford. Then Eric Page he says, you know what I call one? Well, let's let somebody else catch one. Well, he decides to sling it down to Tim Cortazzo with his first touchdown catch of the year. And then on the flip side, Bowling Green gets on the board. Calvin Wiley with a touchdown reception. And then the very first offensive play from scrimmage, Adonis Thomas goes 81 yards. And that is where we stand, 26-7. Bowling Green with a couple of turnovers. But it's really been the Steve. Adonis Thomas story. Ten carries, 101 yards and a touchdown. Receiving three catches, 70 yards. Sprinkle in Morgan Williams in there, giving him a blow every once in a while. And Toledo hard to identify and stop right now in the first half of this one. Oh, it's the throwback. Incomplete pressure. On Owens forced him to get rid of it quicker than he would have liked. Left-handed quarterback rolling right, trying to set up a screen to the left side of the formation. That's tough. I mean, you hear me talk about you know catching those shotgun snaps and getting the ball out fast. Tough to do, but there, that's that's almost impossible. Short roll to the right, set up a screen left. If you're a lefty at quarterback. Page in motion. Fourth down, Toledo going for it. Quick hitter over the middle, incomplete. And Bowling Green's defense stands. And the offense will come back with 47 ticks on the clock. Well, and the reason why I say it's tough, Dave, is because a lot of times, especially on a play like this one on fourth down, you don't get the laces right there. It's so fast that you're not even really, really getting the laces to throw the football or get a nice grip on it where you can throw it. Now, he molds it there so fast that he's able to get a piece of the laces, but that is a tough, tough thing to do, especially with routes that occur that fast. So, Matt Schultz and company will throw on first down. Dangerous pass, but good catch on the near side. By Kamar Jordan, gain of six. Let's take one more look at that snap right there. You see it, and you you, you get lucky every once in a while that you catch it and it comes up and you can feel the laces. But most times, that fast, you're not going to get laces. You're just throwing the football. Bowling Green with three timeouts left, trying to make something happen here before halftime. Tyrone Pronti gets to midfield. That'll stop the clock, obviously, to move the chains. That's a gain of 16, and there's 18 seconds to go before halftime. Yeah, really no rush for Bowling Green. The clock's going to stop with the first down, but as well, they've got three timeouts, which they, which, uh, they just took one of them. Well, Saturday afternoon, ABC delivers a battle in the Big Ten as Terrell Pryor leads the Buckeyes into Iowa for a tough road test against Ricky Stancy and the Hawkeyes. Ohio State must win to remain in contention for the Rose Bowl. College football presented by Kay Jewelers on ABC at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Ohio State, Iowa. That'll be a good football game. Hawkeyes thinking about last week. Tough week yeah. for them. Ready to get back to, the, get back to business. Tough week for both of these teams. Bowling Green coming off that last second loss to Miami of Ohio. They had the football late in the game going down the field. They thought they were headed in the right direction, but a ball was batted in the air and intercepted by Miami of Ohio. And a few plays later, with no time left, field goal was good, and Bowling Green loses by three. Schultz. 
He's dropped back at the 44-yard line, a loss of A. Douglas Westbrook picks up his fourth sack of the season. When he is a guy that can really come off the corner, a speed rusher, and uh, we'll see it right here. Just watch the left of your screen. Number 58, Douglas Westbrook. Around the corner, just a speed rush. Dip the shoulder and shorten the corner. And Boychik banked up slowly off the field. But here's what we were just talking about last week. As the Fog Bowl, 27 miles away down in Bowling Green. And, well, Bowling Green got off to a good start. Mark Jordan chased down. But then here's the play. Off of Calvin Wiley, batted in the air and picked off. And then in the fog, you can barely see the Miami of Ohio players. But we did see the ball go through the uprights, 24-21. 33-yard field goal as time expires. And that is Tough way the to lose. fourth loss that has gone down to the final play or two for Bowling Green this year. Scott Lewis moves over to center, replacing Ben Wojcic. Schultz trying to run it. He has dropped right about midfield with six seconds. And Bowling Green has a timeout, so they'll use it. Mark Singer gets credit for the stop. So maybe a chance for yeah, obvious passing situation in Toledo teeing off coming after Mike Schultz. Four of the last six games determined by just a shade over two points and all decided within the last minute of the game. And they played in five and actually have won one of one of the five. But boy, that uh, they could very easily be in contention uh, for a bowl game themselves. A couple of bounces here and there for, for uh, Toledo. Excuse me, for Bowling Green. Bowling Green, bowl eligible last year, went to a bowl game. This year it's Toledo. There are three. Locked up bowl games for the MAC, but there are five bowl eligible teams, so you know you're not guaranteed something if you're just six wins. So Tim Beckman imploring his club, yeah. we got to get as many as we can. Four Rockets standing at the goal line. And the clock has expired. And finally Schultz. Dropped right back at the line of scrimmage, right where we started, but a flag is down, so we'll wait and see what this is about. Obviously, if it's against Bowling Green, we'll head to the locker room and illegal formation. Offense, five men in the backfield. Billy's decline. Halftime. Tim Beckman has had trouble getting his club going in the first half this year. It's been a real point of contention. Between him and his players, he talked about it all week. Well, they got off to a great start in their rivalry game against Bowling Green. 26 to 7 is our score here in Toledo. Now let's send it to the college football halftime report. Running your own business is complex, no? You must always be prepared for the unexpected. <laughs> the ESPN3.com College Football Halftime Report is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. We are insurance. We are farmers. Welcome to ESPN3.com's Halftime Report, brought to you by Farmers Insurance. I'm Cassidy Hubbard alongside Christian Fourier, and we're joined by our BCS expert, Brad Edwards, for the top half of the show. It's week 12, and for the first time in five years, the top 10 in the BCS standings did not change. Let's take a look at how they stack up. Oregon is still number one, but they lost votes and points due to their close win against Cal. Auburn at number two, second in both polls, but number one in the computers. Then it gets tight here with TC.
TCU at third, but their lead over Boise State has been cut in half after the Horned Frogs played their closest game of the season against San Diego State. And Boise State blew out Idaho 52-14 last weekend. And LSU is still the top-ranked one-loss team in the BCS standing. So we didn't have a change in the top five this week, but a lot happened last weekend. As I pointed out, the top three teams struggled. We saw Oregon finally looked human for the first time. So Brad, would this be your top five? Well, they would be the top four in that order. I've got a little bit different order, but uh, I, I would still have Oregon at number one. Uh, just because they played a close game, I, I, I'm willing to give them a pass. They've been so consistent throughout the year and have, have dominated opposition up until that one close game against Cal. And I've got Boise State number two also because of consistency. Obviously, they had the big wins out of conference in September, but they have dominated every opponent since then. They've done everything you could ask of them. Auburn I have at number three because I have concerns about their defense and whether it will ultimately cost them in a big game. TCU, I, I didn't drop them because of last week. I already had them at four. Um, I think they're as good as Boise State and Auburn, but somebody's got to be fourth out of that group. And uh, I love Stanford as the best one-loss team right now. Yeah, you know, I, you're, I basically have the same teams that you have. I just have the order kind of mixed up a little bit. You have Boise State at number two, which I'm surprised at. I mean, you are the expert, so I'm going to give you a pass. So mine, that's, that's all the eye <laughs> test. My, mine, mine is Oregon at number one, Auburn at number two, and they've been there pretty much for, for a while for me. Now, TCU and Boise State could really be interchangeable, but I'm keeping TCU there because I think they're consistent just as much as Boise State. But I love them last year, and I love them this year also. So now I have Stanford at number five because I think they're the best one-loss team of all the one-loss teams in the conference. So you guys really differ on where you place the non-AQ teams. We've been talking a lot about what the chances are for a one-loss SEC team to get into the national championship game for a couple weeks now. But we saw Oregon against the ropes last weekend for the first time. So let's just say this. If Oregon and Auburn loses and we have a top ten filled with one-loss AQ teams, which team is in best position to get into the national championship game? Uh, you know, I still think it's Auburn. Uh, and, and obviously, they'd have to lose really late. And ideally, in college football, you know, you'd rather lose early than late. But in this particular case, and I have to put a condition on it, if Auburn's loss comes at Alabama, I think that's a game that voters will go easy on them for. I'm not saying they wouldn't drop them at all. But they're not going to plummet in the rankings the way that we've seen other teams fall when they've lost their first game of the season. And Auburn's got a chance to, back, to bounce back from that game win the SEC championship game against South Carolina. If they're able to do that, and especially if they're able to do it comfortably, I think Auburn's in a great spot because I can tell you this, if every AQ conference team has a loss and there are no undefeateds except for Boise State and TCU, I think Auburn is still ranked number one in those computers, and that would go a long way toward giving them a chance to finish top two in the BCS. Yeah, I mean, the computers play such a huge role in this. And when I'm looking at this, I if, if one of those teams lose, I'm not putting either of them in it because I'm taking an undefeated TCU or, and an undefeated Boise State, and we're having a rematch from last year's Fiesta Bowl. I mean, you can't really, you know, tell from all the one-loss teams that are out there, Stanford, LSU, Wisconsin, Nebraska, uh, uh, Ohio State. I mean, how much um, better is Auburn as a one-loss one -loss team than a Stanford or, or Ohio State, and how can we tell? So I'm just going based on what I want to see and what I think is right. And if everybody else has a loss, it needs to go to the undefeated teams. Oh, the college football traditionalists are going to be upset here in that <laughs> yeah, one. I know. They don't I want agree it. with them, though. There's, there's not much of a difference between those teams. You watch them play. And they all look the same to me. So I'm, I, I would have no problem with that. Nice. All right. Well, as of right now, we have all four teams in the top four undefeated. So quickly, who do you have in the national championship taking in consideration their upcoming schedule right now? You know what? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with um, I'm going to go with Oregon. First of all, I don't think anybody's going to beat Oregon uh, because of their remaining schedule. And I'm going to go with TCU. Um, I have a feeling that I just praise Boise State oh, for their consistency. You just threw but I think, I think Boise State's going to lose at Nevada. I really do. I think Nevada is, is a really good team. With that game being at home, I think they can. Yeah, it's funny because you're saying Boise State, which has surprised me. And it, for me, it's staying at Oregon and Auburn because I want, uh, I keep wanting and thinking that Auburn is going to lose to Alabama. But whenever I really try to put it on paper, I can't do it because I just don't think Al Auburn is going to lose and I don't think Alabama will beat them. Thus, thus they'll play South Carolina in the, in the SEC championship game and then those two will go against each other. But I like your scenario better than mine. I actually wish I could change Well, you mind. know what? Auburn and Oregon would probably combine for about 100 points in the national championship game. It would be the most entertaining BCS championship game ever. Yeah, but your scenario for me is that what I think puts this non-AQ 
AQ, you know, scenario to rest once and for all. And I think uh, if somebody if loses, if yeah. somebody yeah. loses now, that remains to be seen. I'll, I'll make sure to get you some syrup for that waffle later. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's me thrown in. Uh, bottom bit. line, <laughs> it's going to be a race to the finish. Thank goodness we have Brad Edwards to help we'll us. We'll get your it prediction all out. later. Yeah. All right. Uh, off the air. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Brad. Coming up after the break, we'll give you the latest on the Cam Newton saga and talk about what these allegations might mean for the Heisman Trophy race. Stick around. Monday, done with work, but it hasn't been a cakewalk. First, you stuck your foot in your mouth. It's a big day. Big day. And then a sale went south. Oh, but Monday means Monday Night Football, where you're the employee of the month for a day. We're the Luns, and our family has owned five Camrys. I drove the 92 Camry. I drive a 2007 Camry. I was expecting the 2005 Camry, and my sister got it. I was driving the 94 Toyota Camry, and my dad surprised me with a 2005 Toyota Camry. <sighs> I drove all of them, but I drive the 2009. Why Camry? Reliability, yeah. affordability. Share your Toyota story on Facebook.com slash Toyota. Welcome to Sports Nation on ESPN3.com, brought to you by Toyota. I'm Colin Coward, and today's poll question, who is the Toyota Quality Performer of the Week? Vincent Brown's quite a receiver on the left coast for San Diego State. Dominic Davis, ECU quarterback. Brian Ellis, UAB quarterback. Between the ECU and the UAB, those guys can sling it. Marcus Lattimore, best young freshman running back in the country, maybe South Carolina. All right, go to SportsNation.com, vote. Join us on Saturdays on ESPN3.com to see the results. Cassidy, back to you. Welcome back. The Cam Newton saga continues to develop. On Tuesday, former Mississippi State player John Bond, who sparked the investigation of Newton's recruitment out of junior college, was interviewed by the FBI. Additionally, Kenny Rogers, the man who allegedly solicited money on Newton's behalf, met with the NCAA. Both the FBI and the NCAA declined to comment on the investigations. Auburn is on a bye this week, and Gene Chizik came out and said that he will not be commenting on this matter all week. All this turmoil hasn't seemed to distract Newton on the field. He had another brilliant performance last weekend, passing for two touchdowns and getting two on the ground as the Tigers locked up the SEC West title. Statistically, Newton is still way ahead of the pack in the Heisman race, but you can't ignore the allegations surrounding Newton and how they're going to affect the voters come December. So I ask you this, if not Newton, then who will the voters vote for? If not Newton... Oh, listen, it's tough because he's hands down the best player in college football. So let's figure it out. You got two people, in my opinion, who I think have a good chance of winning this thing, and it would be LaMichael James of Oregon, the running back, or Kellen Moore, the quarterback out of Boise State. Now, for me, I'm picking Kellen Moore just for the fact that he's the, he is the quarterback and he runs this team. I mean, LaMichael James, good, putting up a lot of yardage, but I think a lot of it has to do with the system that he's in. Take LaMichael James out of that system, and you can put another speedy, fast back in there, and he can do not maybe not as well, but just as good. Now, if you look at the stats between these top three guys, Cam Newton, hands down, is is, is the best out of all of them. His passing yards are just a little bit below Kellen Moore's passing yards. His rushing yards are just a little bit below uh, LaMichael James rushing yards and the t and the touchdowns are about the same. There's not there's not even a uh, there's not even a second or a third choice in my book. It's really Cam Newton and then everybody else. It'd be interesting if let's say Kellen Moore loses out on the Heisman and then Auburn wins the national championship then you have Boise State possibly losing out of the national championship game and then a Heisman Trophy. So this, this, this situation is, uh, is one of the biggest stories that I've known yeah. in college football. Yeah, somebody's got to lose. You know, they can't give the award to two, uh, to two people. So. Well, let's shift to the games this weekend. Even though the top three are on a bye, there are some interesting games involving the best of the one-loss teams. Christian, what are some games that you're interested in this weekend? Uh, there, there's always good games in college football, and I'm going to start with uh, Ohio State going down to Iowa. Now, this game is going to be a dogfight. You're talking about an Iowa team that is mathematically still in the hunt, although a lot of things got to happen, so they can play spoiler. Iowa, they need to tighten up on both sides of the ball. Offense couldn't stay on the field. Defense couldn't get off. Ohio State, they need to start fast and play a complete game. And they're going to need a lot of this guy right here, Dan Heron. 190 yards and a TD last year. That was a career day. Ninth straight game with a touchdown. Nebraska at Texas A&M. 
Saturday's game at Kyle Field is, is being designated as 12th man day. So it's going to be loud. But this defense of Texas A&M, they are stingy. They do not let people score touchdowns. They are ranked second in the Big 12. And Cyrus Gray, two games, 259 yards and five TDs. Va Tech going to Miami. Now, Virginia Tech can clinch the Coastal Division with a berth in the AC championship, but they need to stop Leonard Hankerson and the three running backs that amassed 277 yards combined. That with the play of Stephen Morris, they have a chance to upset Virginia Tech, but they're going to need even more help if they're going to continue to try and make a play in the Coastal Division. Another interesting game is that Northwestern Illinois game at Wrigley Field. You like that too. That's your hometown. Yeah, that's my hometown and then my my old school, but they they it's a little interesting because they have a, a little only a foot after the end zone, so we'll see how that works out. Yeah, no Saturday. corner routes in yeah. that game. Well, coming up, it has been a season-long nightmare for the Texas Longhorns. We'll hear from Matt Brown about what has gone wrong this year. You won't want to miss this after the break. He's never getting in there. No way. Plenty of room. Unreal. ESPN, your NBA destination for games Wednesdays and Fridays. Welcome back. In the preseason AP poll, Texas was ranked fifth. Obviously, the season has not gone as expected. Texas coach Mac Brown is having his worst season as a Longhorns coach. Last weekend, Texas suffered their sixth loss and have now lost four consecutive games at home for the first time since 1956. The Longhorns are in need of wins in their final two games to avoid missing the bowl season altogether for the first time since 1997. Our Tom Rinaldi sat down with Mac Brown and discussed what this season has been like. What has gone wrong? Uh, again, it's uh, how long you got? <laughs> it's been the perfect storm of problems this year. It implodes on Texas. Touchdown, Iowa State! When you think it can't get any worse for the Longhorns, it does. You've said some strong things through this season to this point, Mac. After Iowa State. Which I was miserable, by the way. You can't trust your players. You can't trust your coaches. Why not? I did not think we gave uh, the opponent respect. And that's, I didn't think it at UCLA, and I didn't think it at Iowa State. And to me, that's the worst thing that a head coach can have happen. If I can't trust our coaches and I can't trust our players that we're going to be ready to play 12 times a year, that's the worst thing that can happen to a head football coach. Whose responsibility is that? Well, it's mine. And that's why I was saying, I said, I, uh, I'm not getting it done, but I can't trust you unless you help me. Regarding your staff, you said, if one guy's playing bad, I can replace him. If three guys are playing bad, I've got to replace you. Yeah, well, I've, I've told coaches that for 27 years. I mean, if your whole group's not playing well. Why say that publicly? I think it's true. I mean, why not say it publicly? Who should be replaced? Well, we're not talking about that now. You do that at the end of the year, but you, you, you continually look at what you need to do to make people accountable. I've said it forever that... If one player is messing up, we can replace a player. If your whole group is messing up, then you better look in that mirror. People want to hang somebody. They want somebody fired. They want somebody put out on, on the uh, uh, street without clothes so we can embarrass them and, and be rude to them. Uh, no one person except me is responsible for all this. Texas, we have a problem. <laughs> Let me see it. Matt Brown could have lost his team, huh? mm -hmm. which is much, much worse than losing games. What's your response to that? Well, my first thought was, no, they're downstairs. Uh, I saw them uh, all the time. With all due respect to Coach Corso, he had not seen us practice in, in the 13 years I've been here. He doesn't know our team. He doesn't know whether we've lost our team or not. He's like everybody else. He can sit and look at the scoreboard and say, oops, they've won 10 plus games for 10 straight years. They're not now, so there is a problem. So everybody's got their own reason that, that, that the thing hadn't worked this year. And I'm the only one that, that will figure out the answers. If a team is a reflection of a coach's identity, how does this team reflect you? Oh, not good. I, uh, I want them to finish strong. What an awful message if I lay around and pout uh, if, if I feel sorry for myself to these players, what an awful message to these, these fans. If, if I can't stand up and be credible and I can't do this interview with you and, and you ask me hard questions, all I can do is do the best I can do and tell the truth, but I can keep fighting. I cannot quit. 
Christian, there's been chatter that Mac Brown should be replaced after the performance this year. Is that a re overreaction? Yeah, I, I laugh when I even uh, hear you say that because it's chatter. I hear talk about a coach that has won a national championship, set a Big 12 record of 21 consecutive conference wins. Uh, he has back-to-back 11-win -back seasons, and he has nine 10 win seasons so I know Mac Brown can coach that's not a question what concerns me is that he says that he doesn't have his players don't respect their opponents now that is a problem because when you don't respect your opponent it means you go out there and you kind of just throw it out there it means you don't prepare it means you think that because you're Texas that you can just go out there and maybe not prepare as much, maybe not try as hard because there's no way UCLA could come into your town, into your stadium, and win. Oh, guess what? They can't, and so can Iowa State. And you haven't won since September 11th at home. So I like the fact that Coach Brown is taking all this on his shoulders, but sometimes the message get, gets lost in the translation, and the guys who need to hear it are the assistant coaches and then the players. And if they don't get the message, it doesn't matter what Mac Brown the same because nobody nobody's going to do anything about it so does this responsibility rest solely on Mac Brown it always it always lays on the head coach it doesn't matter who you are but it also lays on his offensive quarter and his defensive quarter then it goes to the assistant coaches then it goes to the players the message has to be sent clearly and the guys who are responsible for that have to make sure they pass it along well, the Longhorns have another test this weekend. They need to take down Florida Atlantic at home Saturday in order to keep their bowl hopes alive. Before we let you go, let's take a look at some of the other games this weekend that you can find right here on ESPN3.com. Number seven, Wisconsin coming off dropping 83 on Indiana. Travel to Michigan to take on their high-powered offense. Question there is if Michigan's defense can stop the Badgers from putting up all those points. Also, an ACC clash with number 25, Florida State and Maryland. The Terps are just a half game behind the Seminoles. Can controlling their own destiny and could win the Atlantic title with two more wins. You can catch all these games and much, much more on ESPN3.com. Well, that's a wrap on the ESPN3.com halftime show brought to you by Farmers Insurance. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. He's Christian Fourier. Enjoy the second half. Yeah, I did.
We are back in the glass bowl. Third quarter, moments away. It's all Toledo, 26 to 7, over 300 yards of offense. And what has been a uh, an impressive display by the Toledo Rockets. Dave Neal alongside Andre Ware. And Andre, uh, Tim Beckman's really talked about getting off to a better start. Well, I think he got that and then some tonight. I mean, this was an impressive uh, opening first half. It really was. And they wanted to get their young redshirt freshman quarterback, Terrence Owens, off to that good start. And he, he hit it flying hit the ground running and, and he hadn't looked back he got cold there for a minute right. but he finished the half uh, finished it up pretty good and he certainly uh, found Adonis Thomas and why wouldn't you as we take a look at our game track brought to you by Fidelity yeah it was uh, off to a good start for Terrence Owens to Eric Page to get the scoring started he came right back with a deep with a deep post pattern excuse me this is Adonis Thomas and his long sick move I'll tell you what, he can hit the home run, run between the tackles, and then give you runs like this. 81 yards on the touchdown, 171 yards of offense. And uh, Kamar Jordan, four catches, but never really uh, broke free from the Rocket secondary. And had a fumble here at the end of this one. And if they're going to get themselves back into this football game, Kamar Jordan's going to be a big part of it for Bowling Green. Well, the Rockets have lost three straight in this series. A battle of I-75, just 27 miles separate these two schools down I-75, both coming off midweek losses a, a week ago. Bowling Green losing at the horn to Miami of Ohio and Northern Illinois, just hammering Toledo 65 to 30. And here we are underway in the second half. That kick taken by Tyrone Pronti out Tyrone near the 30-yard line. You take a look at our first half numbers, and boy, you talk about balance from Toledo. 189 and 203 combines for 392, and they own the football for 17 minutes. Yeah, even with the flashes from uh, Willie Jeter, only 17 yards rushing, and it's because of the sack total, the sack numbers for Toledo. Three sacks in the first half that uh, really hurt the rush production for Bowling Green. Ten yards per play in that first half mm -hmm. for the Rockets. So Bowling Green will try to get some offense. Schiltz will throw out to the near side. Here's Jordan. He'll be close to the first down. He needs to get probably a shade over the 40, and I think he will have it. Archie Donald with his eighth tackle of the evening. They didn't waste any time getting Kamar Jordan involved. Junior right out of halftime, get him the football. Here's Jeter trying to work that left side. Might have lost a yard. Here's a guy that uh, just keeps making plays. DJ Patinikin, the sophomore defensive end at Harrisburg, Ohio. Just play after play. He was the guy that actually got down the field and strip the football from Kamar Jordan. Schiltz over the middle to guess who? Kamar Jordan. Bang, bang, two catches out of the locker room. And they go Jordan. hand in hand. When you start to do that a little bit, quick passes to Kamar Jordan, it's going to open up some things for Willie Jeter because you've got to take a defender and move him away from the line of scrimmage. Schiltz, it's Jeter. Big hit around the 36. Gain of seven. Dan Moles, that middle linebacker. A sophomore. With his 10th stop of the evening. Dan came in leading this team with 106 tackles. Here's Jeter. It's Bowling Green trying to hustle up at the line. Close to a first down, maybe just short. You can already see the effect of getting Kamar Jordan involved in this second half early. On third and a yard, they'll go quarterback sneak to Matt Shills. I don't know if he got it or not. It looks like that's forward progress should be around the 33, and that will be good enough for a first down, I believe. Well, let me tell you something. If he didn't get it, you line up and you do the exact same thing again on fourth down. Just right there trying to quick snap to Lido and... I think he's more than a, more than enough for the first down. Schultz. It's Jordan again. You're seeing a little uh, glimpse of how 
Kamar Jordan was able to pick up 80 receptions coming into this game. Well, he knew that they weren't going to keep him in check the entire game, but that takes care of the protection problems. Get back, get set, get it out. Over the middle, pass is dropped. Down around the 15, Adrian Hodges. Hit him right in the hands. You see the numbers in terms of receptions. Freddie Barnes, an NCAA record 155 last year. Shields dropped back at the 31 yard line. A loss of six. Archie Donald will pick up the sack. And the coaches describe him as very good side to side. He's good lateral speed and can run plays down. And they decide to blitz him here right up the middle. And it's Willie Jeter who misses the block. Nice athletic play going over the top of Jeter to get the sack. Toledo 22 sacks for 144 yards. That's fifth in the MAC, but tonight four sacks on Matt Schiltz. Look down here, rolling the dice a little bit. Fourth and eight. Schiltz will keep it to the 25, and he'll be denied the first down. Archie Donald now with his tenth tackle. And Toledo will get the football. You got to be a little, show a little more toughness than that, Matt Schiltz. You're trying to get get a first down on fourth down. Stick your nose in there, get dirty a little bit. You'll see it here, just almost like he's protecting himself before he got there. Little quarterback draw, and it's there. Got blocker set up, and right here, you get outside, whatever it is. You got to fly into that pile to try to get the first down. Here's Eric Page. Cannot break the tackle of Adrian Spencer. Gain of two on the play. Page in the first half. Had two catches, 56 yards, and a touchdown. Also threw for a touchdown, 35 yarder. His second touchdown pass of the year. Terrence Owens in that first half, seven out of 13. Hello. Here's Page again. This time he loses three yards. You see the timing thrown off just a little bit there. Wasn't able to get the get the football molded quite as fast. And then it throws the timing off and it doesn't allow Eric Page to make a move. Calvin Marshall came up and made a nice play from uh, from the defensive secondary. Third and long, maybe Bowling Green dials up a little pressure of their own. A little rush three. Page. That play was headed nowhere. Well read, well played by Bowling Green. Boo Boo Gates, the true freshman out of Middleton, Ohio. He's brought down by Jerry Kennedy. That'll bring up fourth down. Here's Vince Pinza to punt it away. His fourth punt of the evening is a line drive. Eugene Cooper will field it just inside the 30. He's trying to get some blockers. Cuts it back inside. He's to the 40. Cooper's going to break free. Touchdown, Bowling Green, 71 yards. Well, he picked up a tremendous block by Tyrone Pronti. There, that just kind of freed things up for him and allowed him to break a couple of tackles and then get into the end zone. Excellent return by Eugene Cooper. And they do a nice, he does a nice job getting to the, not the wall, but just where they're setting up the blocks. And their own property leading the way for, uh, for Eugene Cooper. Cal Burkhart to attempt the point after. It is through the uprights. And how about Eugene Cooper? His second punt return for a touchdown. His first went 63 yards. This one goes 71.
set up perfectly by the Bowling Green punt return unit. It is Well, Bowling Green just got back in the game, courtesy of a Eugene Cooper 71-yard punt return. 26-14 is our score here in the third quarter. It's a good way to get a little momentum. What, you hear me say this all the time. What's the fastest way to win or lose a football game? Special teams. Because it's one play, and it's a momentum changer, and it can mean all the difference in a football game. Right now, special teams got Bowling Green right back into this football game. 10.06 to go. Here in the third quarter. Taken at the 10. Eric Page. He is stopped at the 25-yard line. 15-yard return. Let's take a look back at our coverage spotlight brought to you by Travelers Insurance. Well, in special teams, you need some good blocks. And I'm going to identify two of them. Tyrone Pronti, number eight right there, is the first block. Watch that block right there. Freeze, up, freeze him up, Eugene Cooper. And then coming into your screen right there, watch the block of Aaron Foster right there. Don't need a big block, but just a piece to get to the house. Nice job on special teams by Bowling Green. Second punt return for a touchdown for Mr. Cooper. Last time Bowling Green scored. Next play down the field, Adonis Thomas with 81 yards. This time he only picks up 12. For the momentum change if they're able to stop and get the football back with an opportunity to go get points. Quick snap. Here's Thomas again. We well, better identify that guy, though. Six yard pickup. Calvin Marshall with back to back stops out of that rover position in the Bowling Green secondary. Good looking athlete out of Miramar, Florida, Dillard High School. Short, Dave. 
for the first down. He needed three, he got two. Magnolia with the tackle along with Calvin Marshall again. Generous spot. It's called home cooking right there. <laughs> His helmet was on that. Uh, Flags are down. Illegal substitution. On the offense, 12 men in formation. Five yard penalty. First down. Saw Adonis Thomas run off the field. Pasquale came in at quarterback, and now they'll send Owens back out on the field and Thomas as well. They suck. <laughs> this looked Grant like sucks, an unorganized but... fire drill. Well, they, they come with so much person, so many personnel groupings and move in and out of formations that, you know, so I guess they confuse themselves <laughs> sometimes. That handoff to Thomas. He's stuffed. Loses four on the play. Jones and McNone converge for the tackle. You get second down, you get a good penetration by Angelo McNone and Chris Jones up the field. Nowhere to go for Thomas. And got a redshirt freshman quarterback, hadn't seen a whole lot. Second and long, maybe you come up and come dial up a little pressure here. See what Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator, decides to do with his Falcons defense. Second down and 18. Owens. Back pulse. A couple extra yards out of it, but well shy of the first down. He needs to get into Bowling Green territory. Down at the 44 for the first down. So that'll bring up a long third down, and let's say 13, maybe 14. Yeah, that's a dimension that he adds to that position. Being able to pull it down, nothing is open, a lot of deep drops, and still make a, make a play with his legs. But still, third down and long, and Bowling Green, if they can get off the field, they get some points. we got a ball game. Trying to set up a little screen. Well read by the Falcons. Boo Boo Gates comes out of his... Rover position, a loss of two on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the two freshmen who earned all Ohio honors as a high school senior right here identifies the screen and then makes a play. You got to get inside of a block, and he does it to Nate Cole, who is the guard kicking out, or supposed to kick out on Boo Boo Gates, but he gets inside of him, up the field, and a nice tackle to force a punt here. Pinza will punt it away again. This is a much better punt that Cooper can't get his hands on. It'll settle in at the three-yard line. How about that? You give up a punt. A flag down back at the 31, but you give up a punt return, then you make a nice play on special teams. Well, you got to feel that, baby. I know he's returned one for a touchdown, but that one's got to – you got to feel that one. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the kicking team, number 71, 15 yards, first down, timeout. Wow, not exactly what uh, Tim Beckman had in mind on that punt play. Back in a moment.
ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Acura. The most innovative thinking you'll find, you'll find in an Acura. Back at the glass ball. The home field for the Toledo Rockets. They lead by a dozen. Bowling Green with the football. At the 19-yard line. Schultz. Pocket collapses again. Gets the pass off. Cannot... Be contained by Tyrone Pronti. Let's go back to there was a personal foul in the last punt. Andre, show us what happened. It's right here. A Blo little block in the back right here. A little shove. Just keep an eye on it. And right in the back, way away from the play. Shove a guy in the back. The officials are going to catch it every time. Ball would have been down around the four-yard line. Instead, Bowling Green gets it at the 19. Working on second down. And 10. Willie Jeter will pick up four. Archie Donald with 13 tackles in this game and a season high 16 total tackles against NIU also had 16 tackles in the win against Purdue earlier this year. Here's Schultz throws that ball is picked off. Charles Ransifer. They call him Bobo with the interception, his first of the season. And I ask if they, that nickname followed him to Toledo. It's like, yeah, out of high school, he was Bobo. But Charles Ransomer, this is just a bad throw. Inside, expecting a receiver to come inside. Tyrone Conti hooks it up. And Mike, Matt Schiltz, a little ill-advised throw and a nice play by Charles Ransomer. His 12th interception. Of the year for Matt Schiltz. Let's take one more look at it. And that was Thomas. Right off left guard inside the 20, down to the 14, but back to the interception. Yeah, and it's just Tyrone Pronti should keep coming and cover up his quarterback. He's expecting him to break it inside. And Thomas right here after the first play, right off the gut. Thomas again cuts it back. We'll get a couple of yards. Thomas now 135 yards on the ground, 16 carries. He's coming off a fantastic game yeah. against NIU when he had 10 carries, 152 yards. Just 15 yards a clip, that's all. <laughs> Pretty good day, no doubt about it. They fell behind 28 to nothing to the Huskies. Scored 30 second half points in that game against uh, Northern Illinois. The problem was they gave up 65. <laughs> Thomas inside the 10 down to around the eight yard line. Another three yard pickup. Darius Smith in on the tackle. Now trying to work the clock a little bit. Get behind that big offensive line who uh, They've started every game together, and you rarely see that at this point in the season. All year long, as a unit, they've been together every single game. Pasquale on the Wildcat. Little razzle dazzle, tall sweep. Bernard Reedy. Touchdown, Toledo. Nine yards. Pasquale to Page to Reedy. smile on Charles Ransomer's face. The offense rewarding a nice defensive play. And right here, a little trickery. Page to Reedy. A couple of nice blocks there. Oh, Mike Vandermeulen, big fella reaching out, diving to throw a block for Kenny Staff. Andrew Mullen, 34 career starts on that offensive line with a big block. Excuse me, Reedy. Reedy with his first touchdown of his young career. The true freshman. Coaches said he's been playing well lately. The former high school quarterback. He knows what to do when he gets his hands on it. 
Toledo leading 33-14. Bernard Reedy with the nine-yard touchdown run. And you see what Toledo's offense has done tonight. 33 points. They have uh, bettered their season average here in the third quarter with 421 to play in the third. And the Rocket faithful. You know, usually they don't get to watch this game. It's usually the uh, weekend of Thanksgiving. Students are gone, but they decided to move it to a midweek of Wednesday. Yeah. Allowing the student bodies from both schools to come enjoy the game. Oh! So Christian Ooh. Smith will kick off the 6'2", 260-pound freshman. <laughs> will put a toe into it. And Tyrone Pronti brought down. Around the 17 yard line by Ross Madison. But how about the big fella getting out there with a kick? <laughs> you don't see that very often. Oh, what he's getting congratulated from his teammates. Look at the big fella. Got to time it up straight on. Has he got the toe raise? That's, that's like our air right there, Andre. To lace up the big toe. <laughs> I, know, I know all about that. Trust me. Throw or run a touchdown. You got to sprint over, change the shoe, kick the extra point. <laughs> <laughs> that is old school. Well, I love that. Exhausted when you finish. I to see the straight on kicker. I can't even tell you why the last time I saw that. Willie Jeter. Out of the 20. Willie Jeter. Well, ABC Saturday Night Football delivers regional action. Most of the nation will see Taylor Martinez lead the eighth-ranked Cornhuskers against Ryan Tannehill and a tough Texas A&M team. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And a flag down as an incomplete pass is ruled, but flags down. Flag on the play. Offside. Defense, number 40, five-yard penalty, second down. Alex Johnson, the defensive end. But I was just thinking, I mean, it was the last straight-on kicker, George Brand Blanda, the late, great George Blanda, who just passed away. No, 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 no. Redskins had one since Blanda. Uh, Mark yeah. Mosley. Yeah, Mark Mosley. There you go. Forgot about Mark. First the NFL record. Straight on kicker. Tom Dempsey with the New Orleans Saints as Hopgood out over the 26 to the 27 yard line. But even Mosley, I mean, you got to go back. You got to go way back. It's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you don't great. see it much. And you don't see the guy that with weighs 260 pounds kicking off either very often. You don't see that. Matt Schiltz with a little keeper on third down and very short. They will give him the first down. Did you kick? Am I getting the thing that you kicked in high school? I did kick in high school. Yep. And had one of those shoes. First down. A little steel toe, baby. All black. Last week during our SEC game, I had a chance to watch you catch a pass down the sideline. Schultz. Pass is caught, but a big hit on the outside from Isaiah Ballard. Tyrone Pronti makes the catch and holds on. Told a long time ago, the more you can do, the longer you stay around. <laughs> Steve Spurrier won a Heisman. A lot of people say it's because he kicked a field goal against Auburn back in 1966 to win a ball game. That might have got him over the hump. Yeah. Pass complete to Eugene Cooper, his 16th catch of the year, gain of four. Desmond Merrow with his fifth tackle. Trying to change the tempo a little bit here for Matt Schultz and, and uh, let him operate where you get back, get set, take a little bit of the thought process out of it for him. and. Just let him play some football. Over the middle and caught. Jordan Hopgood with a great catch as he sandwiched between two defenders led by Isaiah Ballard. It's going to be enough for a first down to move the chains. And this sometimes is a, a recipe for helping a quarterback find his rhythm. Get to the far side. Tyrone Pronti gets it to the 47, a gain of eight. He made a tough throw. 
the previous play, and then you reward him with a nice little easy completion, extended handoff to the slot receiver Tyrone Bronte. And keep a, keep a young quarterback in second and short. He can operate a little bit. I'm good. Good pick up the first down into Toledo territory. Gain of three, only needed a couple. And then you give him some options as well. You can run the football and you keep the heat out of his kitchen, so to speak, because if you keep him in third, third and long, second and long, you can best believe Mike Ward's going to dial up a little pressure. Schiltz throws behind his receiver. Ray Hudson couldn't hold on to it. His first action tonight. How do you offset the pressure? Screen passes, draw plays, quick hitters, get the football out, slants. Or he's not sitting back there holding it a long time and taking shots. Let's hurry up. No huddle here in the second half. This certainly brought this offense to life. They were going nowhere in the first half for the most part. Adrian Hodges, a couple of yards. Well, it, it forces you to just go play. Instead of just kind of thinking your way through it and you get to the line and you get set and look over to the sideline. Too much thought, you know, too much thought going into it. Just go play. Call a play, execute. Bowling Green, four out of 12 on third downs tonight. Excuse me, five out of 13. Not good. That may be another first down. It will be down to the 38 yard line. Archie Donald with another tackle. A deep zone drops here. They decide to go zone. Only rush three. They get it blocked up. And then a, bro a uh, broken tackle by Jordan Hopgood makes a guy miss and then able to get north and south in a hurry. Ball start. Offense for 73. Five yard penalty. First down. Back him up five with 42 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Dave Clawson's club. Just to show you the problems on the offensive line, Jordan Russo, who had that false start six weeks ago, he was playing 40 snaps a game on defense. Now he's starting to right tackle. Schultz going down the middle, overthrows Eugene Cooper, and that'll. Bring up second down and 15. Yeah, I mean, when you start moving defensive guys to offense in the middle of the year, you know you have some issues. Yeah, he, was, he was on the defensive line six weeks ago. As I mentioned, 40 snaps a game. And then so many injuries on that offensive line, he had to come over and help out. Sophomore out of Pittsburgh. Here's Schultz rolling left, sets his feet, and chucks it into the student section. <laughs> There's a souvenir for somebody. Douglas Westbrook, that speed he rusher. The fuck up. <laughs> I, think, I think we just saw the reason why he's a fan. <laughs> didn't have a good follow through. Did he? <laughs> Another third down for Dave Clawson's Bowling Green Falcons. Third down and 15. And Bowling Green wants a timeout. Now it's close to be a delay a game. Bowling Green, they're first. 30 second timeout. Andre, break down this. Uh, well, the, the replay officials ought to review this. Yeah. I mean, this is illegal. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, I'm going to get the laces and then. Then he, try, then he gives the old follow through as if he's, you know, winged it out there or something. <laughs> Having a good time at the game. Yeah, you go. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, it's Toledo, Bowling Green, man. It's the battle for the peace pipe. <laughs> that's, that's great. He loves his Rockets. That's great. One more time. Uh, his buddies are going to wear him out. <laughs> <laughs> Not that well, you haven't, right? In the day of, this, of, of technology, he, he, he'll get a yeah. he'll get a text message or a phone will be going off here pretty soon. <laughs> oh 
boy. Work on that follow through. You're killing me over there. Here's third and 15. Schilt steps up, fires, passes, caught. Looked like they were trying to do a little hook and ladder. Tyrone Prompt, he made the catch, but Kamar Jordan kind of came in right behind him. It almost looked as though he was trying to pitch it off. Yeah, nobody else showed up, and he had to just kind of eat it. But a nice job of getting it to where you're, you can manage fourth down. If you decide to go for it here, fourth and six, you can manage it and maybe have a chance to pick it up. Well, decision for Dave Clawson and company. They got themselves back into this game for a moment, but then Toledo answers right back. It's 33-14. We have played three in Toledo. Boy, that's, that's tough, tough, man. That is yeah. uh, that's a tough break. You hate to see that for anybody. Greg Oden's just a really good kid, too. You know, I mean, it's it's tough for Portland, but tough for him. Here it is fourth down at six to start the fourth quarter. Bowling Green trailing 33-14. 
pass to the wide side of the field caught by Tyrone, or excuse me, Adrian Hodges. That's a pickup of eight and a first down now for the Falcons. A nice job getting it out, and, a, and it, it, it goes because Willie Jeter picks up the blitzer to give Matt Schultz enough time to flip it out there to Adrian Hodges. Quick snap on first down, trying to set up Jeter on a little screen, runs away from his blocking, now cuts it back. And the little five foot seven tailback gets it down to the 23 yard line. Let's go back and take a look at this fourth down and watch, watch the block right there. Don't have to get a big piece, but enough of Archie Donald by Willie Jeter allows for the, the time for protection for Matt, Matt Schultz to get it off. Schultz under pressure, throws back over the middle. Incomplete on second down, looking for Pronti. Schultz now 24 out of 37, a buck 76, a touchdown and a pick. He has been harassed for the majority of this football game. Standing in there, showing some toughness. And talking to the coaching staff this week, he said, hey, he's earned the respect of his teammates because they see, you know, what he's going through week by week. Here's Jeter. He's hit at the 20 and dropped. Archie Donald with his 15th stop tonight. He wanted Chip Robinson, the big right guard, to get on out there and throw a block for him and just couldn't wait it out. He decided to go on his own and then all of a sudden he had Archie Donald chasing him down. 37 yard field goal. On the way from Kyle Burkhart. His long of the year, just 34 yards. In the right hash. Kick is up and it is way off the mark. To the right. No good to so the drive stalls with 13-26 to play in the contest. Dave Clausen's group trailing 33-14 on the road at Toledo. Well, time for a little history lesson. If you didn't know about the Glass Bowl here in Toledo, the stadium was originally built in 1937, but following World War II, the stadium was renovated with many glass elements. Now, because of that and the city's concentration on the glass industry, the stadium was renamed the Glass Bowl in 1946. But one of the great things about this stadium is just outside in the corner of the stadium is that, a rocket. 
How about that? Toledo procured a genuine rocket from the U.S. Army Missile Program. It's a one-ton rocket, sits outside the glass bowl, aimed to hit the 50-yard line of Bowling Green's Dort Perry Stadium. Now that's a rival. <laughs> Here's your Thomas Thomas. I mean, there's, you can steal somebody's anchor, you yeah. can steal, you know, the go, but... Not going after that rocket. <laughs> yeah, when you line up a rocket aimed at the 50-yard line at your rival's stadium, that's intense stuff. 27 and a half miles separate these two institutions. It is a 75th meeting between Bowling Green and Toledo. Good look at this facility. Nice football stadium. It is. 13 minutes to go, 33-14. Toledo got off to a 19 to nothing start in the first six minutes of this game. Right through the hands of Bernard Reedy. That'll bring up a third down and five. Good quick decision. Reedy's got to hold on to that one. And talking to the coaching staff, true freshman who had the, the end around for a touchdown, that'd be the fastest player on the team. And he kind of showed it on it. That last touchdown that he had. But they got to hold on to the football. Toledo three out of nine on third downs. Graphic, you saw it. They've been averaging about nine yards to make on third downs. This is just third and five. Here comes some heat. Pass is caught. That'll be a first down, a gain of eight. And that's especially, you know, that's special right there. When the football has to come out, you know where they want to go with it on third down, the Eric Page. They formation to get him the one-on-one -on -one that he wants. And watch the quick out. Look at the ball. Out quickly to, uh, to, to uh, get the football in his hands and not allow the defender to make a break on the football. Oh, it's 12 out of 20 throwing the football. It was 6 out of 6 to start the game for over 100 yards and a couple of TDs. Thomas. The 34-yard line, a gain of one. Champ Fells with the tackle. And, you know, I give Bowling Green a lot of credit. There have been a couple of broken plays, but this could have gotten out of hand big time. I mean, I'm talking early on. It was 19 to nothing. It didn't look like Dave Clausen's club could stop at any opportunity, this Toledo offense. Yeah, played this, the end of the second quarter pretty good and then came out in the uh, second half and really got some rhythm going. The Jeter has got a lead in the way. Kamar, Kamar George, Jordan as well getting involved. They just couldn't convert. Here's a quick snap out of the Wildcat. Not much happening again of four. Toledo and Bowling Green going at it. Toledo trying to snap a three-game skid to the rivals. Leading 33-14, Dave Neal, Andre Ware. Right to join us from a cool, crisp Toledo Glass Bowl Stadium. The story offensively has been Adonis Thomas, 20 carries, 147 yards on the ground for the Rockets. Third down. Owens pass is caught by Page. That's another first down. Champ Fells pushes him out of bounds, but that's a pickup of nine. For a couple of different ways to get yourself open, and an experienced receiver like Eric Page, who's run a lot of routes, you watch him use the uh, the ump the umpire here. Watch the umpire as he rubs right off of him. They lose him in coverage, and out the backside. Well, you don't need a pick when you have the umpire sitting there. Use the umpire to kind of get yourself open. That's excellent route running. Aaron Torrance, the redshirt freshman quarterback out of Cleveland, Ohio. Hands it off to Morgan Williams, and he'll lose a yard. Dwayne Woods Morgan with the stop. Morgan. His seventh tackle tonight and picks up a tackle for loss. Look at our game summary tonight. Thomas 147 plus 67 yards receiving and a touchdown. Seven catches for Kamar Jordan tonight. Fourth in the country with 80. Difference on the scoreboard. Toledo 33, Bowling Green 14. 
Wildcat formation as Pasquale in at quarterback. Pasquale. No gain on the play. Well played by the Falcons. David comes out by Uber Gates. Now Terrence Owens checking himself in and went to the back. He's from Cleveland, Ohio, went to Bloomfield High School. It's the same high school that uh, Ted Ginn Jr. attended. His father, Ted Ginn Sr., head coach there. Good football program. You've got a boo boo, a bobo on the field today. How often do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. He reached deep into the bag with that. You just don't see that. <laughs> I don't think you have to. Here's Terrence Owens. The slender 6 3 quarterback will get it down to the 42 yard line, actually the 43, and that'll be about a yard shy of the first down. So it'll be like fourth and a yard and a half, perhaps. and here comes Pasquale back onto the field, the 6'2", 230 quarterback, replacing the 6'3", 180 quarterback. He's all run. They'll counter and power with Pasquale. He will get north and south here in a hurry. Well, he's thrown one pass this year. Just one. 0 for 1 is Pasquale. Here's Page in motion. Pasquale will keep it. And he will have the first down. At the 34-yard line, Darius Smith with the tackle, but not before Pasquale picks up eight. In this direction, they bring Page across, and they fake him, pull the uh, right guard, Nat Cole. It allows Pasquale to get up the field. Some nice blocks inside. Oh, that's well designed. the football to allow Eric Page to go get it. Nice little hint with the shoulders back inside to hold the safety. Right there. Ever so close. Eric Page a good football player. You had a chance to see some good receivers this year. We'll see one of the best on Saturday yeah. and Alshon Jeffrey down in South Carolina. Here's Adonis Thomas breaks a tackle. They get a couple of white jerseys with him for a ride down to the 27 yard line. He gets seven on a play that probably should have got two. Well, if defensively, if you're bowling green, you got to start trying to tackle the football, pop it out, something, because now you're just taking your medicine. A bunch of missed tackles. Tim Fells there misses the tackle, excuse me, with the pressure. Here's Thomas. No gain. That'll bring up fourth down and a couple. Start tackling that football. Try to get yourself a turnover. Is this right now? Toledo just milking this clock down. Seven minutes to go on fourth down. Pasquale back in the game. He converted last time from about the same distance. Let's see what they do here. Page looks like the same play. It is the same play. This time the Falcons read it. Maybe a loss of a yard. Dwayne Woods with a big time play, and that'll turn the football over with 6.42 to play in the football game. Timeout on the field. Good stop by the Falcons. Is there enough time?
ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the Volkswagen Signed and Drive Event, where you can drive away in a VW for practically just your signature. And Toshiba, Toshiba, leading innovation. Back in Toledo, 33-14 our score is time now for building a program brought to you by Craftsman. You look at some of the non-conference opponents over the years for this Toledo team and well, they're getting bigger and bigger down the road and you see in uh, 2011 Ohio State back on the schedule and Boise State and of course Syracuse which is kind of maybe turn the corner a little bit in Big East football getting a little bit better maybe the yep. conference down a little bit that kind of helps Syracuse well, that will be a tough tough schedule next season more to come for Toledo as Jim Beckman trying to build this program in his second year. Here's Tyrone Pronti out to the 40-yard line. That'll be a first down. Stop the clock for a moment. And in the future, here are some of the games that uh, Coach Beckman's lined up. Of course, uh, no 12. It'll be or 12. It'll be Arizona, then Florida. Of course, uh, he spent some time coaching with Urban Meyer, so there's that connection. Jordan getting out of bounds in Toledo territory. Of course, Miami, not just Ohio, Miami of Florida, the Hurricanes coming and playing Toledo in 2015 and 16. So, not easy. A few heavyweights on that schedule. Incomplete as Schultz hits the deck with 6.07 to play. Both these coaches in their second season at their respective schools. Dave Clawson, of course, was coaching at Richmond, had a nice little run, and was hired by Philip Fulmer to be the offensive coordinator at Tennessee. And well, that didn't go very well. Coach Fulmer has let go of his duties. Dave Clawson's out of a job, and Bowling Green needed a coach, and they hired him. And Done a nice job with the Falcons getting him to a bowl game last year in his first season. Schiltz complete over the middle. 602 on the clock. Well, and I'll tell you, even when he has some time to get rid of the football, still taking some shots because it's a split second between him getting it off or being sacked, and, and they are right in the face of Matt Schultz and have been for most of this football game. Third down and ten. This could be the last gasp for the Falcons here. If they can't convert, it's actually two down territory. Schultz trying to set up the screen to hop good. He is shy. Well, you cut it, cut it down a little bit and have the opportunity to maybe pick it up here on fourth down. Converted a few fourth four downs throughout the second half to keep drives going. The last one resulted in a missed field goal. So on fourth and five, here you go. Pass to the near side. It's caught. They will spot it at the 37 yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down. Tyrone Pronti with a big top catch. See it here. They do a nice job with the formation to get Pronti. Basically one on one or wide open over there. Deep zone drops. Intercepted. Taekwon Page picks it off. Schultz just threw a bullet right at Eugene Cooper through his hands, and Page with the pick gives it back to the Rockets with 5.14 to go. Bowling Green, their last gas perhaps picked off by Toledo.
Time now for our accurate drive recap. We'll take you back to the opening drive of the game. Adonis Thomas with a couple of good carries. Owens with a couple of short passes. And Toledo was moving the football, and then he decided to strike down the middle of the field. Eight plays, 80 yards, 3.55 off the clock. Eric Page with the reception. 48 yards on the touchdown catch. Mac opponent's going to see that combination for a long time. Terrence Owens just a redshirt freshman. Eric Page just a sophomore. A lot of football ahead for those two. 5-14 on the clock. Rockets will certainly try to just run this out. Thomas stays in bounds. It's a couple on the play. Thomas, 23 carries, 159 yards. has been one of those seasons for Bowling Green where they've had to battle through so many injuries. They've been in so many games and they just couldn't get over the hump. As we've mentioned, four losses in the final play or two this season. Here's Thomas to the 21-yard line. That's three more. That'll bring up a third down and we'll say four. Uh, if you're Toledo, you just want to keep the chains moving, keep the clock running, and get ready for next week. From an offensive standpoint, you really got to like the future of Toledo's offense. Oh, there's no doubt Please. about it. They got some playmakers. Most of the skilled position players are underclassmen. They clock down to two. There's the snap. Owens over the middle. Pass is caught. One of those playmakers, Eric Page. Caught down by Keith Morgan. That's a first down. Well, Saturday afternoon, ABC delivers a battle in the Big Ten as Terrell Pryor leads the Buckeyes into Iowa for a tough road test against Ricky Stanzi and the Hawkeyes. Ohio State must win to remain in contention for the Rose Bowl. So it's a big one. College football presented by K Jewelers on ABC at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Well, when in doubt, go to Eric Page, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Eric Page tonight. Seven catches. Now 80. Make that eight catches. Now 81 grabs on the season for Eric Page as Toledo. Has to stop the clock. 30 second timeout. But Eric Page trying to chase down his counterpart on the other side for the Mac reception total. And Kamar Jordan came in with 80, and now Eric Page has produced 81. Yeah, eight catches, 94 yards, and a touchdown. And he's done it in a lot of different ways short, long, big plays on third down. And you just want to get him the football. And oh, yeah, he was a high school quarterback, so he can throw touchdown passes as well. Fun to watch that young man play football. You know, most, most good athletes play quarterback in high school. Andre, let's get a little NBA update and head back to our studios. Here it's 304 on the clock. Pasquale checks back in. It'll be a loss of one. Ball Swan makes the tackle for the Falcons. Second down and 11 as the clock continues to move. And 240. Once again, Bowling Green is bowl eligible. There are three bowl tie-ins, automatic tie-ins for the Mid-America Conference. I mean, there Toledo. Are, I mean, Toledo, excuse me, yes. And there are five bowl-eligible teams right now. So just because you have six wins doesn't guarantee you anything. 
So the more the merrier in terms of the win column for the Rockets. So Toledo will get number seven tonight. They would love to get number eight. But there are the tie-ins for the Mac. Humanitarian, the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, Dallas, GMAC, the PapaJohns.com. So depending on if other other conferences can't fulfill their obligations, that'll free up some spots. One of those was like the Papa John's. Here's Page. Out of the 43-yard line. Are the bowl eligible teams out of the MAC, Northern Illinois? And Ohio look like they're on a collision course for the MAC championship game. Yeah, you get to seven, you can pretty much guarantee yourself a, a trip to a bowl. Six, you're eligible, and but not guaranteed. Seven, eight wins, you're going. Down on the ground, trying to get a number for you with 124 to play. Mike, are you going to accept the peace fight? <laughs> well, after tonight, here's it. What the West Division in the MAC will look like. Toledo picks up the win here, but they're going to need Northern Illinois to lose a couple of games in Toledo to win their finale. To get to the championship game. The Huskies putting it on Toledo last week, 65 to 30. Adrian Spencer being helped off the field. Looks like he should be okay. First down and 10 for the Rockets, and they don't need to do much except take a knee. Victory formation a few times ought to put a wrap on it. What a nice job. I thought play calling today by Matt Campbell, their offensive coordinator, mixing the run with the pass and giving enough for Adonis Thomas to keep Bowling Green honest. And then uh, Terrence Owens played a nice ball game as well, spread it around pretty good. A number of receivers in this one and pretty much kept the offense out of out of trouble as, as uh, he plays more. Mac opponent's going to figure out uh, he's a pretty good quarterback and not one that they want to see. So the second start for Terrence Owens is a good one. And there is the peace pipe. Remember back in 1969, they battled for the peace pipe in basketball, but somebody stole it. They didn't know what to do. Well, in 1980, somebody made another one, and they said, hey, let's play for it on the football field with Bowling Green. So that's what they've been playing for for the first time in four years. Toledo gets to hold on to the peace pipe as they beat Bowling Green 33-14. Tim Beckman picks up the win. His first over Bowling Green as the head coach of the Toledo Rockets. A big night for this Toledo offense with 539 yards of offense, led by 163 yards on the ground from Adonis Thomas and 111 through the air, receiving from Eric Page. So a big win for Toledo. They will go to seven and four, six and one. Bowling Green falls to two and nine, one and six in conference play. Once again, the final score, 33-14. Toledo wins it. Coming up next at Sports Center. So for Andre Ware and our entire crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Toledo. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's sit into Sports Center with John Anderson and Steve Levy.